Sabona everyone, back in 2020, I traveled to the beautiful country of Albania. I spent 15 incredible days exploring this beautiful country and I started it all off in Tirana, the capital. Tirana is so awesome. I started in Skanderbeg Square, I ate my way through the city, I had Tavas, Chevapi, Burak, so much delicious food plus some Raki. We explored all of Tirana and we also made our way to Duras, the second largest city on the coast, on the Adriatic Sea. There you have ancient ruins and lots of incredible seafood. And we also visited Kruja. Kruja is the home to George Castriotti, also known as Skanderbeg. Skanderbeg is the symbol of Albania. He is the national hero. This is Skanderbeg. Without further ado, let me introduce you to this beautiful capital. This is Tirana, Albania. Albania team, Annie. Hello, hi. Hi, hello. Erjan, Erjan. Yeah, Erjan. Yeah, Where are we going, what are we doing? Welcome in Albania. First, we are going to try some Albanian fast food. So it's like a five minute walk, we're in the center, you know, so literally you walk out of this complex and you're on the main street. It's a ring road, goes around the entire city, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's sort of how it is. So we are walking in, uh, in the direction of Skanderbeg Square. It is the main center of Tirana and uh, you'll like it. Skanderbeg. Skanderbeg. Yes. Skanderbeg. Skanderbeg. So this is like Our right here. National hero. Your national hero? Yeah. You can say George Castriotti. George Castriotti. Name and uh, his title it's uh, Skanderbeg. This place is called Fast Food Albania. Fast Food Albania, okay. So basically they're making gyros back here, but they're calling it souvlaki. So what do you guys have? Let me see. First so this is the maestro. This is first in Tirana, in Albania. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. And what, what is he cutting here? What is this? Uh, chicken. This, this chicken. is just chicken? Yeah, yeah. And then, so what's this one? This is pork and another is chicken. This is yes. chicken. So you have a mix. Okay, perfect. Number one, number one Tirana master. Number one Tirana master? Yes. <laughs> I make for you one gyro, like with pork, if you want. It's, look at the meat. It's okay. perfect. It is my favorite thing they eat in Greece. So here they call it, so you call it souvlaki here, yes. correct? Yes. Okay, so you get the bread. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, what you want inside, my friend? Whatever you want, whatever you think. Okay. Think tzatziki, tomato, and little bit onions. Welcome, fresh, fresh. I'm happy to grab in a little This is very hot. Very hot, huh? Yeah, perfect. Are you not charged? All right. Mm. Okay, so Annie, I have souvlaki with yes. pork. Yes. And then spicy sauce, uh, french fries, he also puts tzatziki, onions. Tomatoes, salads, Tomato salads. cucumbers. And yes. then you have this little picker if you want to just go into it, right? Yes. It's like a, it's like a fork pick. Yes. Oh and God. it is the most uh, common dishes uh, when you when you are in a hurry and you need to eat something yeah. in Albania. Yeah, I mean this is basically Greek street food in Albania. Yes. Same, different. Let's try. It. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. Lots of garlic. Mm -hmm. mm. I love the bread. Spicy. Wow. I don't know what that spicy sauce is, but they say peppers. Mm, so tasty. I mean, it is really, really tasty. It's filling. I love this bread. Mm, nice tomato. Very creamy. The amount that Ziggy put in this is insane. It's really good. Mm. This wow. is the perfect way to do it. That's like... <laughs> that is the perfect way. I put a lot of, a lot of um, ketchup and a lot of mustard. If you guys haven't had a, like a Greek gyro, the pita is a little thicker. It's not like a flat bread. It's a, yeah. little, a little more dense. Mm. But the way you gotta do it is just like this. French fries, tzatziki, mmm. Hot of pork, tomatoes. Mm -hmm. It's really hot, huh? Yeah, yeah. It was hot, it was hot. It's good? It was good, it was good. Real? Thank you, bro. Yeah, yeah, it was perfect. Thank you. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. All right, guys. Well, sorry about that. It started pouring on us. We couldn't have the camera out. I mean, it was way too much rain. 
And that is it. We are here in Albania. What a long day it's been. I traveled for like 17 hours. I went from Miami to London Heathrow, like a seven and a half hour, seven hours and 45 minute flight. A uh, long flight, I slept the whole way. Then I got to London, checked into a lounge, and then I flew three hours straight here to Albania, where it's basically almost COVID free. Pretty amazing, feels normal again. Wow, and the, the food I just had right now, that souvlaki or the gyro. So that's like a Greek gyro, but here in Albania it's called souvlaki. You can get chicken or pork. That was bomb, that was awesome. Ah, I am tired, I'm exhausted, but I'm so excited because it's my first taste of Albania. The next 14 days, this is really the 15th day, so the next 14 full days are gonna be epic. I hope you guys are ready for this adventure. You guys have no idea of what I'm about to bring you from Albania. Annie, how you doing? Hello, great. I'm doing great. This is the main square of, uh, of Tirana. Uh, he's our national hero. His, name, his real name is George Castriotti. And uh, since we are in the heart of Albania, in Tirana, also the, the main square represents the unity of Albania. The marble that are used for the, for the square of uh, Skanderbeg are taken from different uh, zones, different city of Albania, and also the plants and also the trees that we have in the center of the square are taken from different zones of Albania, so to represent the unity of the country here in the capital of Albania. So, and also in my right side, it is one of the surviving uh, 18th century mosque uh, in Tirana. Uh, so now we are going to have the breakfast in the castle of Tirana. And uh, as we go there, we'll see a lot of colorful buildings uh, that are, uh, for the moment, the most important ministries of, uh, of Albania. And uh, the, as you can see, there is a difference between uh, the buildings in Albania and all of them represent a different kind of periods that Albania has been through. For example, the building that you, you see around us, the colorful ones, there are the Italian style buildings. Yeah, so right here in the smack center of the city, it feels very European, very Italian. Uh, the country opened up in 91 and look, I mean, gorgeous. And the temperature is perfect, by the way. I, I didn't think it was too hot this morning. You know, it's summer, it's August. It's gonna be really hot here in the Balkans. Yes, yeah, so Every day is gonna be scorching, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. And it's right here, the castle? That is the pedestrian of Tirana. It is a street uh, where the cars are not allowed and it is only for the people walking. Uh, it used to be also the national uh, theater here, but it was, uh, was destroyed lately during the quarantine. A lot of places to sit. I love the, the like right now, sitting down, having a coffee. That would be good. If I smoked a cigarette, I would be smoking a cigarette too. <laughs> I mean, this is like perfect. The temperature is great. And right here at the end of the street, we have Tirana Castle. Beautiful. Famil Ja Toptani. Famil Ja Toptani. And then in front of it, you have all these beautiful modern buildings. Look at this. So modern buildings, pedestrian walkway, pedestrian street, and the castle. Tirana Castle. Toptani family. Incredible. So how old is this castle? 18th century? Wow. So it actually has roots from the early Byzantine era, so fourth and sixth century. But then it, you know, obviously went through Ottoman period, then eventually in the 18th century when they built this castle. And here we go, we're entering the castle. And so this castle isn't like a ruined fortress. This is more like a living castle. So they've converted inside restaurants. They also have souvenir shops and over here. So we have a outdoor seating, more outdoor seating. They love outdoor seating here in Albania. Breakfast is right there. Seren. Yes. Perfect. So this is Seren restaurant. As you can see, it's a very farm feel, you know, really rustic, modern at the same time. And here we're starting off with a W Espresso. They were under Italian influence for, you know, a little bit in the 90s. So they like their Italian coffees. Mm, super strong. And next to it, we have Rakia, the national drink. Super strong, distilled grapes. Wow, that is good. If you guys don't know about this, in the Balkans, they love rakia. Each country produces it. Some countries do different things, like use honey, apricots, plums. Here in Albania, traditionally, it's grapes. So there's still grapes. And the reason why you have it in the morning with your coffee is that it helps your blood flow. A lot of the old men, especially like in North Macedonia, Albania, they love drinking this in the morning. I mean, one shot and you're, you're ready to go. It's like energy, right? Oh, this is good. I can't even believe I'm doing this in the morning. <laughs> and also in my house that we do not have a, a, a space uh, in the outside, we do it in the inside. It's a little bit uh, 
uh, it's a little bit difficult because uh, the, there are the grapes fermenting and everything so it is uh, the, the smell it is very strong and we do it we take turns to see all the process of, uh, of, uh, of boiling of, uh, of the grapes to produce rakia so it's kind of in every house of Albania wow so tasty it's strong but at the same time it's good it's not like moonshine it's like really really nice Ooh, this one's strong <laughs> And here we go, we're in the kitchen. We're gonna see how they make some delicious breakfast, Albanian breakfast. What are we making? So she's making a, fa a famous dish for breakfast in Albania. It is called trahana. And uh, for trahana, she's using uh, boiling water, uh, butter and salt. This is uh, the, the main ingredient of preparing trahana. It is the flour of trahana that we have here. And we put it together with water, salt and butter. And then right here we have bread with eggs. Basically similar to a French toast. You were saying that every morning you used to have this, right? My grandmother used to, uh, used to prepare it every morning for the kids. It may be small, it may be little, but of course it has to be a lot. <laughs> so the chef here is making spetula, which is Albanian pancakes. The way it works, a little different. You know, so they have here boiling oil, then they drop in dough, and that's it, right? Yeah. So it's not really a pancake on a, on a like a, on a pan, it's in the oil. So it's like a floating pancake. Yes, right? and uh, very soon you will see the pancakes coming out of the oil. All right guys, so I'm gonna take out the pancakes. So it's more like, almost like fluff, fluffy dough, right? Right there, perfect. So this is the second batch of the petula, the Albanian pancakes. You just made it a little fluffier, more flour, more eggs, just doughier, right? So it's gonna come out more round as well. Man, it smells good. Food looks good. It got some eggs, got some rice, got some bread with uh, eggs as well. And this? So we have an Albanian breakfast here. We have eggs, tomato, goat cheese, uh, cucumbers. We have uh, jam, uh, fig jam. We have uh, blueberries jam, a little bit of uh, beef salam. This is a huge, authentic Albanian breakfast. I'm so excited. I'm gonna start off with this amazing egg with the cheese. This cheese reminds me of feta cheese, very thick, very condensed. It's made out of goat milk. Oh my God, so do I just like eat it like this? Nice, right there, mix it together. This is gonna be so good. I'm breaking the fast, guys. Mmm, over easy, right? Sunny side up, mixed with this delicious salty cheese. Gotta say, the cheese is out of control. Mm. So you got tomato, cucumber, and the cheese, and that's basically like an Albanian salad. This is what I love about the Balkans. The cultures and traditions have been mixed and they've been fused, you know? Okay, so next dish, I'm gonna try some rice with some chicken kebab. Very simple dish, looks delicious. So it's chofta. Mmm. Oh wow. It's nice. It's a little soft and hard at the same time, like almost al dente. I love the kebab. Smoky, little charcoal. Even though it's very simple, so tasty. I'm gonna keep separating things because there's too many dishes here, guys. Like, I'm going one after the other. I think it's 10 dishes. And this is tahana, very traditional Albanian dish. Flour, eggs, butter. They let it dry and then they crumble it and here we have it. Amazing. And they add cheese on top, right? Yes. Gotta go in with the spoon, right? Oh wow, so it reminds me of like grits in the States, right? Almost like porridge, right? This is something that people have in, you know, in the field, in the farmlands. They have it, they fill up. Mmm. Mmm. And they also have bread inside it. Yes. Right? Oh. To feel you better. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big grits guy. I love cheese with grits and some shrimp sometimes, right? Shrimp and grits. But this one is stellar. The cheese mixed with this, like, the way they crumble it and also having the bread inside really fills you up. So it's a little different having that breakfast. You just got that big clump in your mouth. Mmm. I, I like this dish a lot. If I eat this dish, the whole thing, I mean full. Mmm, but you gotta get some of that cheese from the top, that nice layer. Wow. And this is a traditional dish called fergesa. 
So it's ricotta cheese, which is called giza. 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 Uh, so peppers, you got meat inside here, olive oil, and that's it. I mean, look at this. It's hot. No, it's not too hot right now, but usually it comes like scorching hot. You can't even touch this. And the way you eat this is either with a spoon or you get some bread. So have some beautiful bread here. Wow. This is. I'm gonna break off some bread and then I'm gonna dip. Just like this, right? Mmm. Right away you get a taste of the peppers, the meat, mmm, the cheese. The cheese is like, it's crumbly, but at the same time it's like, like almost like gooey because it's been melted. Wow, this is this is why it comes to Albania for like little tava dishes like this. Grab as much as possible. Yeah, I let that bread soak it up. Oh yeah. Mm, I wouldn't say it's soup. It's almost like a stew with cheese and peppers. Mm. Wow, so delicate. So good. Like a very traditional home style dish your grandmother would make. Mm. The plate that's most similar to this that I've tried before is goulash. Very, very similar. So now let's try bread and eggs. The most common easy breakfast to make. Mm -hmm. Basically French toast without the syrup. Here we have some honey. So you just get some honey like that. A little bit, right? Mmm. Way better. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it's not sweet. It was just super savory. With it, deliciously sweet. Well, this is a lot of uh, a lot of carbs here. <laughs> if I eat all this bread, I won't be able to eat the pancakes. So this is very similar, obviously. So fried dough, and in the center we have delicious fig jam. Figs are super popular here in the Balkans. You can have it everywhere. Every country has figs. So the way I do this one, just grab one, right? Just dip it right here. Oh, this is gonna be delicious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the Albanian pancake is basically a dough puff ball. You can have it with a delicious fig jam, or you can add honey. If you add sugar on top, this would be very similar to like an elephant ear where you get in the carnivals in America. So just add a little bit of this, right? Whoa. Mmm. Get it hot. So good. And right here we have beef salami. It reminds me of basturma in Armenia. Mmm. Wow. A little smoky. This is a lot of delicious food. Thank you so much. Wow. I don't even know what to do here. Just dive in here. So it's basically yogurt and honey. Yogurt, oats, and honey. Yogurt's really big down here, as well as honey. The oats is a little different. It's the first time I see this dish. Mmm. It's amazing. You guys are too much with these dishes. It's almost like Greek yogurt in the sense that it's like more watery, right? I love the honey, gives it like a nice amount of sugar, right? A little sweet. And the oats gives it an extra thickness. I would say it's almost like a, like almost like oatmeal, but more watered down oatmeal. The last thing we have to try for breakfast is a fruit yogurt. So what do we have on top? Oh, so we have pomegranate, and then we have something else like nuts, right? Mmm. Super fruity. Definitely a thicker yogurt. No, the other one was more like watery. This one's thicker. This is more my type of yogurt. Mmm. I love the pomegranate. They burst in your mouth. Healthy. Personally, I would go with uh, this one, this one, and then my favorite, the Rocky. <laughs> the Rocky, yeah. Mmm. What a way to start a day. First day in Albania. Thank you. This is amazing. Faliminderi. You're welcome. Thank you. Faliminderi. Faliminderi. The food is amazing. Thank you. We'll wait you again. <laughs> the problem is a lot of this is like breaded, right? So you get really full really fast. But now, guys, I have to go see uh, Tirana. Thank you. Thank you. Faliminderi. Bye. Faliminderi. Bye bye. Now we're going to visit the new bazaar of Tirana. The new bazaar? Yes. It is the biggest uh, market in, uh, in Tirana. 
uh, for the fish, uh, vegetables, uh, meat. So we are, here we are uh, in the entrance of the new bazaar of Tirana. Uh, it was built in 1931 because the old bazaar couldn't ha handle all the increase of the commercial activity, but is the biggest uh, market for the moment in Tirana. And so this is like an old door from 1932. Yes, that belonged to the villa of uh, Hati family. This is the bazaar, right in the center, open air, glass, you know, glass roof with lights. On the bottom you have different vendors selling vegetables, fruits, nuts, dried fruits, pots, pots souvenirs. souvenirs, wine. This is great. So this, this is the bazaar, right here. This is the bazaar. Okay. bazaar. My friend, the smell of these olives is insane. Can I try one? Can, is it possible? Yes. Yeah, just grab one. This one's gonna be good. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, whoa. He cleaned out the seed and he stuffed it with a pepper. That one has pepper inside. Yes, this is originally Greek. So try the other ones that are traditional, all Albanian. The other ones are Albanian, only this one was traditionally the Greek stuff with pepper. Oh wow! So this one has a seed? Yes, that is more like homemade. Mm. I love these black olives. Mm. So good. I can eat these all day. And those cut up. Wow. Back there we have more fruits, pears, watermelon. Look at that. They have honey there? Right there? Yes. And rakia? Yes. It's normal to sell rakia in Albania. You can find it everywhere. So they put the homemade rakia into the water bottles. Yes. And then this is obviously from factory. Yes. From the actual winery. Then here we have more wine and this is honey. And I love how they have the honeycomb inside. Yes. This is the... I eat that. Like I literally eat it. It is very good. It's so good for you. Well, and then over here we have... I guess pottery, right? Lots of beautiful pottery. So it's basically five open air rows mixed with things. Yes. Lots of fig, lots of honey, tomatoes. Over here we have basil, I can smell the mint. Wow, from here. These are spoons, wooden spoons that are made with olive trees. By olive trees wood. Okay, so I should take one to my wife. Something like this? Like a big spoon? Olive tree, huh? This is great. Oh, and those are, okay, so those are like, this is more to like mix spices, right? And you put butter in here as well, just break it down. Also for the garlic. So you, 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 you don't touch it because it smells, so you put it there and... So I'm gonna buy this spoon for my wife. It's made out of olive tree and it's 300 lex, which is like a little over three US dollars. Pretty good deal, traditional. I'll take it. Falimenderi, falimenderi, falimenderi. Here at the end of the bazaar, we have the antiques. So you have rings, you have different things from the communist era, you have watches, so many different things, coins. These are all the old coins? Yes. Perfect. Passports, huh? Like passports. Can I buy a passport? So, you know, it's summer. I don't need a scarf. But if you want a scarf, you come in winter, definitely buy this Albanian scarf. It's like $5, so like 500 lakh, right? It's pretty nice. So this is Albania, it's all red. I think I'm gonna get myself a jersey over this, but if it was winter, I would take it. Right now, what's the point, right? Beautiful though, Albania. Forza Albania. Now we're entering at the market of the fish and the meat. And also dairy. Meat, fish, and dairy market. Here we have it, the butcher. Wow, smells good. As you can see, here's the butcher. Baby goat hanging. Mm -hmm. And he has some legs here, liver, kidney. I mean, everything smells so good and fresh. And that's the best part about coming to markets like this. You get your meat super fresh. They cut it for you and it's ready. It was, you know, basically killed today. So yes. the fresh as you can get. Small market, not so big. Over here to the right, we have a few different fish vendors. So lots of different fish. And over here, more butchers, more meat, more delicious lamb and goat. As you guys know, Albania is on the Adriatic Sea, so they have a lot of fish, a lot of delicious seafood. All this fish comes from like Duras, you know, all, basically everything along the coast, right? Here we have squid, we have shrimp, salmon, I don't know, lots of different fish here. Everything is super fresh, caught today, brought here today, and here it is. Wow, never ending shrimp. Oh, it smells great, and if it smells good, you know it's fresh. So you were saying these restaurants over here where everybody's sitting is like meat restaurants? 
Yes, grilled meat restaurant. So what, people come here in the mornings, they eat grilled meat? Yeah, sometimes you'll see people uh, in the morning eating uh, grilled meat and drinking a lot of beer or rakia. Wow. In the morning. And right here we have a souvenir shop that has jerseys. This is the jersey of Albania, the soccer jersey. Yes. I want to try one on. Let's see. All right, guys. I have to try on this shirt. This jersey this is the L. Let's see if it fits me good. Sorry, my little fool. I have a lot of Albanian food today. Yeah, this, is, this is it, right? This is better. Fits me. It's not too long. I like it. This with this, Albania. <laughs> Oh, and let me show you this. Wow. This is, so what is it called? Chiftelia. Chiftelia. So when you come to Albania, buy yourself a Chiftelia, which is like $25. You said $25 for this? A little more? And then this is like $12 for the jersey. $12? Perfect. Okay. I take it. I don't know about this one, though. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe. So I got myself an Albanian jersey. That is the World Cup jersey. They also have the Euro Cup, so they have different styles for different, you know, competitions. And yeah, we're walking through the center. Right there is the square, the center of the city. That's where everybody is. This is like where everything is centered around. And now we're gonna walk over to the car. And where we're we going? Uh, we're going to Mother Teresa Square and uh, check a little bit the buildings around. This neighborhood is called Ex Bloku, Bloku neighborhood. And uh, during the communism pe uh, period, uh, the people working for the government used to live here. And uh, it was a restricted area for ordinary people. So it was uh, protected with guards and uh, simple citizens, let's say, uh, were not allowed to, to enter at this block. So it's basically a private community for the government officials. Yes. During communism, so like 45, 47 years. Yes. This was just a completely restricted, but now it's converted. It, it has started little by little and they were placed uh, here. Their houses and their villas and their, uh, uh, their life. Uh, now here it is the most famous uh, neighborhood in Albania. Uh, and it's very, uh, also in Tirana, let's say, but also in Albania, very famous for the nightlife. A lot of pubs, bar cafes, restaurants, etc. So it's the chic neighborhood of Tirana. You can see it as we entered, lots of beautiful bars restaurants last night we actually drove through here and it was like completely packed lots of people out walking enjoying and yeah banks buildings residences offices restaurants and bars so here we are at mother uh, teresa square it is the second biggest uh, square in uh, tirana it is connected with uh, skanderbeg square through the main boulevard boulevard uh, de smart combit the martyrs of the nation translated it used to has to have also the the statue of mother teresa but now the statue it is put near the airport of mother teresa so next up we're going to try some rakia so it's like a rakia bar thing right no, it is a, a museum coffee, that, uh, it is a very interesting coffee with uh, um, a lot of objects and souvenirs from Albania, old objects, uh, traditional Albanian. That was a quick drive, like two minute drive and we're here at Kometeti, Kometeti Cafe and Museum. Let's go inside. Yeah, tell me. Okay, uh, so this is the most uh, precious thing we have in our houses. This is where we make rakia. This is where we put the grapes to boil them and to do rakia. The inside of Kometeti is a museum. As you can see over here, they have small glasses. These were glasses used during communist era. Over here, they have a beautiful fan, lots of different things here, wood, um, you know, glasses. Over here, we have the tree trunks on the top. We have this flickering. I don't know why it's flickering, I guess. <laughs> Technical issue here. And then if we can walk all the way through to the very end, we have the bar. So this area is basically the open air cafe bar, right? Yes. Uh, you know, open air, very bohemian. I guess this is more, this is more like a hippie place, more relaxed, right? And now we're gonna try ten different rakias, ten. And here we have a flight. She's gonna pour a huge flight for me. Let's do it. Pepper. Okay. <laughs> So I have eight different rakia here. Over here is honey and cinnamon. Then we have dole, which is like a tree here in Albania. Then we have a spicy one, okay? Next up we have saffron rakia. 
that's different. Konu, konu kade, I don't even know what that is. The sixth one is anis, which is basically like uzo. Then we have manifest, so this is blackberry. And the last one is passion with seven sensations. Okay, so we're starting off with the honey and cinnamon. Wow, strong, but mmm. Love the cinnamon. Not so intense with the honey flavor, more cinnamon. That's what I'm, I'm getting sensation of. Very strong. <laughs> this is uh, intense. <laughs> and the next one is the dale, dale, which is the tree. So it's like a type of tree. For me, the strongest rakias are usually the clear ones. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> that one uh, basically tastes tastes like bark. So yeah, so the tree, mm, strong. Oh, and this is the spicy one, right? <coughs> oh my god. It's like straight up black pepper. Ooh. It's a little too strong for me. I'm good with that. Saffron rakia. Oh, it's good. Very flowery. That's the taste here. Flowery, light, nothing compared to the spice. I got that one's like, ooh. I don't even know how you drink the whole thing. <laughs> so this is Konquad, which is Chinese tangerine. Mm hmm Okay, yeah, it's very tangy, very citrusy. Mm. Nice, they're all super strong. Like they're all super intense. You have to have some water on the side. Oh my god, this is uh, whew. I think it's gonna get a lot easier on the next three. So we have anise, blackberry, and this is passion. This is anise, Greek ouzo. Mm. Yeah, it's a lot easier to drink this. Mm. I don't even know how to explain the taste of anise, but if you ever drink raki in Turkey, it's made the same, anise, so they add water into it and it becomes cloudy. Oh, and this is the blackberry. I think this is gonna be my favorite. All the berry rakis, super fruity, flavorful. Blackberry rakia. My favorite. Ooh, ooh. That's like an aftertaste. Ooh. Last one, the passion. Oh man, they've been super intense. Passion, seven sensations. Ooh, this is like, this is a mix of berries and flour. Ooh, all the ones that are a little fruitier, a little more flour, those are the ones that are easier to drink. I think the spicy one was the most intense. This one and this one were just a little too strong. Very, very clear rakia is very, very strong. I like also the honey. So between the honey and the passion, and then also the blackberry, this is the best. So guys, that's it. We saw Tirana today. Started off in Skanderbak Square. Skanderbak? Yes. Amazing square, center of the city. So from there you can walk over to the castle and have breakfast at Serene. We had traditional breakfast, lots of different things. Everything was super delicious from the Albanian pancakes to the beef salami. Also we had like two different uh, tavas. The fregesa was I think my favorite. But then I also love the one with the oats, the yogurt, and the honey. That was like delicious. From there we walked over, we saw the new bazaar, we saw more of the center of the city. We drove over to Mother Teresa Square and then we came here to Cometeti. Cometeti. Cometeti, so museum, cafe, best place to try different rakia. You could do a flight like I did, could try eight different rakia. They have 35, so if you really want to go all out, you could try all of them. I think it's a, it's a little intense, I mean, especially if you haven't had lunch. I'm starving right now, so I gotta like limit the alcohol, but this is really good, really cool experience. I just drove 20 minutes from Tirana, the capital, over here to the village of Surel. And this is like a farming community. They have one of the best restaurants in the country, which is right behind me. It's called Seren, right there. I love Seren. They focus heavily on meats. They have lamb, goat, veal. They smoke them, they cook them. 
This is gonna be amazing. We're gonna get a full experience. We're gonna go in the kitchen. We're gonna see how they smoke the meats. Then we're gonna eat lots of delicious, delicious, like mouth-watering food. And then we're gonna explore the farm around. Annie, you ready? I am ready. Are you hungry? I'm starving, let's, let's go. Let's begin. Annie, I love this entryway. This is beautiful. You have all these plants, flowers. Over here we have an open terrace. We have two-story restaurant. And over here, as you can see, open air. Beautiful, love it. Like a little stream right here. And then you walk in, and this is it. Look at this. So you have tons of wine, rakia. I don't know, that's like a dessert, a cheese? It's a goat yogurt. Goat yogurt. goat yogurt. So where's the meat, guys? Where's the meat? So Ismet is the owner of the restaurant. He also has another restaurant in Pristania, which is the capital of Kosovo. This restaurant is like his biggest, but he's also opening a bigger one nearby. Wow, look at this place. Very traditional, authentic farmhouse style. Oh man, I can't wait for the food. My man. What's up? How you you doing? doing good? Yeah. What are we doing? Some stuff, meat. Meats. Yeah. Veal, goat, lamb. Goat, veal. This is mix. Goat and lamb. Okay, so what are you doing here? You're smoking? Yeah, smoking. Lemon goat. So you smoke it for how long? For two or three hours. Two or three hours? Yeah. And then you put it in the oven? We marinate. You marinate? In the oven. And then oven? Yes. And then you put wine reduction? Yeah, red wine reduction. And that's it. So this is re-smoking. This is yes. like smoking the second time, which yeah. is done. So these are the ribs right there. Yes. Oh my god, this looks... Too good, man. <laughs> I'm excited. And over here, what are we doing with grilling? Yes. Skofta. So you have the tomahawk. Yes. Huge piece of meat. Over here, we have the shish kebabs. Wanna, then we have green for, onions. The one I left for you to put it here. Oh, you left it for me? Yeah, you can do it now. Put in tomahawk. Oh my God. So good. So put it, oh my God, it's like popping in there. Woo! So we have three tomahawks, chicken shish kebabs. We have everything. Oh, what are you doing there? Whoa, you're just marinating with that? What is that? This is all, like, we got some spices. Yeah, time, time. Time. Huh? Yeah, like time, time. We got time. Almost like a pesto. Yes, but different way. Different way. Yeah. Whoa. This is, this is gonna be too good. <laughs> Potatoes? Yes. So what is this? What type of soup is that? This vegetable soup. Just vegetable soup? Yes. Normally only kids take here the soup. They don't, they know, because in the village, they want to eat, but the kids like normally shish kebabs and soups, they like most of them. Okay. But I like to do like proper oven with the wood. And then over here we have like two different pies, right? Yes. This is potatoes. This is a burek. Okay. This is flea. Flea? Flea. Flea. Flea is very hard to make it. Like you have to do, in the three hours, you have to make two fleas. It's Whoa. very hard and like this. So burek, had it a lot in Bosnia. I love it. It's so good. Minced meat, sometimes cheese, sometimes spinach, right? Yeah. Mixed. Okay. And then this one is a little different. It's yeah. round. I'll show, I, I'll show you. How many layers? Whoa. It's just This is very hard to make it. That's why I called. It's like a thousand layers, not really. Yeah. Like a hundred layers. You have to try nice hot, this one. You wanna try? So try it like this. Mm. Oh my God. So what's in it? Just Layers of dough, right? Not cheese, nothing else? Nothing. It's nothing, just layers of dough. Yes. Wow, I'll, I'll say, I'm gonna have a little more. This is very hard to make. Oh my god. Mm. So no cheese, no spinach, no meat, just layers. Mm. The potatoes. You could just smell and smoke. Smell it? Smells so good. Do I just eat it like this? Oh yes. Yeah? Like it's low to it. Wow. Like medium rare. Mm-hmm. Normally in Albania, no most of the people like medium rare means. They like well done. Yeah, I, I like it a little bloody. Do we just eat right here? Well, of course you can. Dude, this is the experience right here. I'm gonna get a super bloody piece. Bloody and fatty. How is it? Mm. This is juicy, it's smoky. I love the taste of the thyme. Wow, the vegetables, man. Like having that extraness, farm to table. This is like farm to my stomach, that's it. <laughs> I know you knew it. Mmm. 
I've never tasted a tomahawk like that. Wow. It's so different. And if you really want to get into it, dig into that bone. I love this two-story restaurant, by the way. The upstairs is amazing. It's super high ceilings, open air, all wood. My boy Ismet actually cooked for the Queen of England, Elizabeth II. When was that? 2013? Uh, 10. 2010? 10. Okay, and you finished in 2013. That's incredible, yes. man. Yes. Wow. Congrats. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank the you. Queen. You know she only likes port wine. Porto. <laughs> I, was, I was a student. Okay. <laughs> I was a student there. I was like excited what I'm doing there, but it was good. It's amazing. It was very, very, very good experience. It really, it was very good. I was shocked when the lecturer told me, hey, Ismail, you have a pickup to go with 10 students, the best student of the school to go there. I said, what? Well, yes. And it was very exciting because I didn't know nothing. And it's like, you have to do dear modesty and stuff like this. But it was very good. It was exciting. We're going to the farm here. The neighbors one. The first thing you get is the smell of the farm. Yes. <laughs> you can smell the pigs. <laughs> oh wow, this is amazing. Look at this. Gorgeous. So what, what are they planting here? So lots of tomatoes. Organic tomatoes. All, all organic tomatoes. It's a pepper. Yeah. Spicy. Spicy? Yes. Let me see. What is this? Are these like pepper? Yeah, these are peppers? No, what is this? Yeah. Corn. Corn. Yeah, these are corn. Like eggplant. Look, eggplant right here. Yes. Oh, amazing. Delicious. Yeah, yeah. So this is apples right here? Yes. Green apples? Yes. No, now you gotta eat it, dude. <laughs> oh yes, I will. <laughs> no, this is a plums. The plums? Oh yeah. sorry. Plums. This is all plums. My friend, I think what's the coolest thing about this place is the amount of land here. They've literally consumed it all and, you know, they're producing some of the best and freshest tomatoes, apples, peaches, grapes. You can see grapes over here. Wow, tomatoes. Oh man, look at these tomatoes. They're so big and plump. Oh, they're so juicy. There's like village tomatoes right here. Wow, and as you can see, you have an incredible view over mountains, valley. Now I'm really hungry. Now we have to go eat. <laughs> My friend, you good? As you can see, this restaurant is really popular. It's packed right now. So many people here eating. They come here for the best and freshest food in the area. We're coming upstairs. I think we're gonna sit on the terrace if we can, if there's space. I think, I think that's perfect, yeah. So this is our appetizers we have. This is like a tzatziki. This is goat cheese without salt. Over here we have a salad. Over here we have, I guess like stuffed peppers, uh, green onion. There we have beef sausage, cheese as well. Two different cheeses, I don't know what that is. It's like a cheese with like a berry inside. And then over here we have olives, we have cabbage, and then we have another like type of sauce, like a super thick sauce. How do I start this, my friend? Does it start? I, I want to really start one of these. Look at this. This is a stuffed pepper. It's gonna be a little spicy, and there's cheese inside. Mm. It's hot, it's creamy. This is amazing. Mm. It's the best, man. Right here we have cheese with wild berries. Okay. This is gold yogurt. So I wanna start off by eating this one, this like, it's like a green pasta, like long pasta with a creamy sauce. Cheese sauce, right? Look at this, beautiful. Wow, look at this, so good. I'm also gonna grab a shish kebab. Oh, and it's stuffed. Mmm, mmm. So, it's like a, a veggie pasta stuffed with cheese and then cheese on top. This is so ridiculous, this food. I love it. Mm. Mm. Oh my God, the creaminess to it. The earthiness. Wow, 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 wow. And next up, we have a chicken shish kebab. So, here it is. Oh my God. Chokta, chokta, similar to kofta. Mm. Nice, like basically minced chicken. Oh my God, the textures. 
the smokiness to it while on the grill is too good. I mean, it just gets better and better and better. And right here we have a tava, right? And this one has mushrooms. I think there's squash in here. Also some nuts. Okay, so let's get a little bit of that. Oh yeah. Oh, it's still super hot. When it comes off the tava, it's always like super, super hot. This one has a lot of delicious squash. Excited for this one, guys. I'm super excited for all the tavas. The tavas are like creamy, delicious, earthy. Mmm. Oh my God. The creamiest mushrooms ever. Dude, what is happening here? Mmm. Oh wow. That's my favorite dish of the trip so far. I've only been here for 24 hours, but that one beats everything else. Mm. I have to continue with the appetizers. So we have the flea, which I tried earlier, which is like this layered dough, right? That's amazing. I think this, add a little bit of honey. Mm. Wow. Next, I have burek. So this burek, has spinach and cheese. This is in Greece, they call it spanakopita. Here it's budek. Mmm, what an amazing pie. So you have the spinach, you have the crumbly cheese, and you have lots of layers. This is special. And next up, we have something I've eaten before. Many places, never in Albania, right? So it's basically quail egg. In the middle is quail egg hard-boiled quail egg. Around it, you have this fried layer of beef. Let's try it. Mmm. Mmm. Textures, mmm. No earthy. Love the, the taste of beef. Mixed with the hard-boiled egg. It's good. It's, it's different. Definitely a different type of dish, right? Mm. Uh, I'm getting full and I haven't even gotten to the meat. <laughs> you have to try the meat too. Mm. So my friend here is telling me to try this yogurt. One of a kind, made out of goat milk. Amazing. Oh! Oh, I'll keep it too because long. I'll keep it too long because <laughs> it's been too long here. Oh man, you're too funny, dude. You're too funny. All right, let me try it then. Mm. Oh, wow. It's different. I mean, it's salty. It's light. It's really natural, right? We're on your side, so. And that pairs really well with the burek and the flia. Flia. Flia, yes. Flia. And finally, we have the ribs. Check this out. Veal ribs over here. A lot more fat. This one's a lot leaner. And then next to it, we have like a barbecue yogurt. And over here, we have like a raspberry or blackberry jam. I'm gonna go with this. Oh, and there's also peanuts on top. Wow. This is... Bro, How is it? it's ridiculous. It's like, it falls off the bone. Look, it's literally falling off the bone. Yes. <laughs> Do I dip into any of these? Hey, this one. This one? I've never had barbecue yogurt before. I'm sure it's gonna pair amazingly with this. Dude, that was crazy. Like a smoked yogurt with all these layers of fat. Look at this, just falling off. Mm. Some of the best rugs of all time. This is too good, bro. How'd you do this? I just told you before. I know. <laughs> you wanna become a chef one day? I mean, I think the key here is where you're getting the produce. Yes. Directly from the farm here. Not all, all the Albania farms, like we help all the people to collect very good products. Because the customers will come here, they will see, they will smell, they will taste. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a lot of things. Mm. That's why the restaurant needs more care about the food. Mm -hmm. This guy's too much. He just cut it all up for me, took off the bones. Here I have delicious goat meat. Mm. 
I love this. That is uh, beetroot. 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 Yeah. I was gonna say I was like, what is it? But wow, blowing me away, man. So tender this goat. So this was smoked yeah. and then cooked. Yes. Smoked again. Hard job. Oh. Hard job. I mean, dude, look at this. This goat meat is just like so tender. It's like perfect. And again, if you guys don't know about lamb, veal, baby goat, the reason you eat that over the older one is because it's only eating or drank milk. It hasn't had grass, so it's definitely, you know, more of a buttery meat, you know, less gamey. Mm. And always incredibly delicious. And I haven't even talked about it, but I also have house wine here. So these are grapes from the area, right? No, this area doesn't have grapes, but I'm taking Albania. You wanna cut some wood? Yeah, yeah, yeah let's cut some wood. They, they cut there, they cut here as well. Okay guys, so we still have dessert. We have baklava here, a little different. This one's more like a cigar shape. So baklava with walnuts, you have vanilla ice cream. Over here we have a blueberry cheesecake, right? And then here we have kadai. Kadai is basically like, almost like super tiny pasta that's fried, right? So it becomes crunchy. In the middle, it's like chocolate and you have ice cream. So chocolate ice cream and, cho and then just vanilla ice cream on the side. So I think I should, Try this one because I've never tried this before. Whoa, that's amazing. Okay, so it's like lots of layers of this. I didn't know it was like that. Oh my God. So it's actually pasta on the bottom and then cut live and then here's like crispy, almost like a crunchy pasta, right? Yes. And you get a little bit of that. Whoa, look at this. I have to like wrap it. Let's try to wrap it here. Mm, sweet. It's almost like vermicelli noodles. Very similar texture. So of all three of these, this is the most traditional, but obviously this is more modernized. This was like a dessert during Ottoman period. It's amazing. Mm. I guess I'll try a little bit of cheesecake. I was gonna try it, right? Get away from me. <laughs> I would just destroy that thing. That's so good. And I'm gonna try this baklava. Baklava is one of my favorites ever. Mmm, love the layers. Filo, dough, walnuts. Mmm, sweet, dense, binds really well. When you come to Albania and you're in the capital of Tirana, come out here to the village of Suro and come to Seren, one of the most unique restaurants I've ever been to. I mean, this is a must visit in Albania farm to table food, slow cooking at its finest. Chef Ismit does a phenomenal job with the food. I mean, wow, what a great spot. The farms are literally right in front of you, right there in those hills, right around us, all over the place. You have farm to table, slow cooked food. The meats are insane. Lamb, goat, veal. They have so many different appetizers. They have wine. I mean, I, I gotta say, it's one of my favorite restaurants I've ever been to. It's like a real eco, restaurant you know super fresh super delicious mouth-watering food i am ready yeah what is that a that rooster a chicken a chicken i love village life man this is the best huh so he has a lot of firewood here just baking it huh that's what you need to to cook the pottery this is the oven uh, that he used and uh, it is already on fire because he's baking pottery inside i'm not even close to the oven and i'm baking i mean it's so hot Closer you get, whoa, it's like an inferno. Oh, you can't even be here. It's too much. He just opened the oven. Guys, it's 900 degrees right here. Oh, you can see the sweat coming down my face. Oh, it's too hot. Oh, wow, ooh, that is scorching. Now let's learn how to make pottery. All right. Yes, hello, David. Uh, so here we have Mr. Bashkim with its clay that is going to prepare a little pot for us and we will see the process that how he, he makes it, he prepares it and uh, even though there are difficult uh, ways of doing it, he d prefers to do it uh, standing up. <sighs> He's 
so he made a small piggy bank. Yes. A piggy bank. That's amazing. So he just made a hole in it, and that's where you put the coins in and the dollars. Yes. That's awesome. Wow. So he just made this beautiful pot for me and the next thing I have to do is write something on it. So I was thinking, you know, my wife, my two girls, what do I write? So I'm going to write Dashni, which means love in Albanian. D-A-S-H-N-I. Right? Dashni. So I'm going to write right here. And the last thing I think I should do is probably put... You think it's perfect? I think it's perfect. Yeah. Dashni. All right, so now that we learned how to make pottery, now we're going to the other oven to see what he's producing there, what he's baking there. Oh, wow. This is the production, huh? So this is the original oven. You know, this is like an industrial oven. Really, really huge in comparison to the other one, but he was saying that he doesn't need this. It's just way too heavy. He doesn't produce that much pottery every day to use this. So this is where he's storing everything that he finishes, right? So here he has plates. He has some vases, some cups, some bowls, some tabas, right? Tabas, amazing. Love the tabas. So on the other side of the property, his son is making more modern style pottery. So if you can see, if you notice the difference, that was more traditional, thicker, using always the same clay. Here it's different. Wow, this is beautiful stuff. The difference between the father and son's potteries is that this one is more like a plastic clay. It, you can work thinner so you can make the products a lot thinner. Obviously here he also paints and the biggest difference is that he puts it in the oven twice, right? So everything's put in the oven twice so it becomes stronger. Like I love this one, man. This is uh, two different clays. They are mixed together and they make this like marbles, you know? That's beautiful. And the, the final product is more beautiful. This turns rose and this turns white. Thank okay. you, thank you. You're the man, you're the man. Thank you. Pottery was epic. Now we're going to a farm. We're going to a farm, we're gonna have dinner, we're gonna see produce, animals. I'm excited. So we made it here to a lake. There's a lake, right? Yeah. The lake of Farca. Farca, yes. Oh. The farm it is in the, in the shores of the lake. Oh, wow. Beautiful. And you said they have something delicacy here, right? Like some frogs or something? Yes, they do make uh, frog legs. Uh, but uh, of course, it's not a typical, uh, typical Albanian food or any uh, traditional Albanian uh, dishes. It is a new thing. So this is La Fattoria, an agro farm. So restaurant, farm. Over here we have chickens, rabbits. We're gonna go inside. We're gonna meet the manager. We're gonna have some rakia. David, Hi. pleasure. Nice to meet pleasure. you. To get to the lake, you walk through the entire farm. They have endless produce here. Over here they have some beautiful rabbits. Whoa, some flowers. Rabbits, turtles. Oh, turtles? Oh no, man. Goat. Amazing. A goat too? Your little area for Donkey, the kids to play. Chickens. <laughs> Donkeys, chickens, everything. Yeah. And here's a beautiful lake. Wow, yes. gorgeous. And then here's the, so it's open area, nice terrace, love it, like, warrior spot. Whoa, this is beautiful. I've never been to a farm on a lake like this, never. Wow, look at this, guys. This is so peaceful, and it's only a 30 minute drive south from Tirana. Gotcha. All right, so we're gonna go over and see the rabbits, the chickens, they're all over here. Right outside the gate. Cross, is there an entrance there? Oh, okay, it's over there. So what do they have? Ducks, chickens. Look at these chickens. Rooster's gonna peck at me. It smells like a farm. How many chickens do you have in here? I have 40. Nice. So you ate 140 in a week? Yeah. Whoa, what do you have in here? <laughs> They're making eggs? Yes. Time to put their eggs, man, that's not much. So these are his new arrivals, baby rabbits. Bunnies, rabbits, bunnies. Bunnies, rabbits. That was a cool experience. Now we're gonna go look at a donkey and a goat and eat some blackberries, some wild berries. Yes, that we may find on our way. Okay. That's amazing, the sheep's head is inside the bucket. He's like, he's eating his way through the bucket. 
<laughs> he wasn't happy. He'll attack. <laughs> and over here we have some geese. Yes. Look at these beautiful Dark geese. geese. Yeah. These are geese right here, right? And geese yeah. attack as well. Geese attack. I know, I know. They're horrible. You gotta be careful with them. So right here we have some wild blackberries. So you can only eat the black ones, obviously. The ones that are ripe. Mmm. Still very sour. Even though they're sour, they're delicious. My favorite berry. Mmm. Blackberries and raspberries, the best. So what's his name? Chufa. 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 Can I touch Chufa? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, he doesn't want me to touch him. He's like, nah. Yeah, yeah, you're the Oh my god. You're more than stretch. Oh my god. So yeah, you're saying yeah. this goat Petrova in September is gonna be gonna become basturma? Yes. Basturma, yeah. Okay. So, Albanian dish Al basturma. So isn't that the same as the Armenian dish? It's like no, it's like almost same, like a because yeah. it's salted cured yeah, meat. Salted, salted meat. Melon. Melon. What else yeah. do you grow here in the farm? Green like peppers, uh, uh, albergin or eggplants. What do you say? Eggplants, green peppers, so tomatoes, pumpkin. pumpkin. Wow. Three kind of pumpkins. This is what I'm talking about. This this to me is like an amazing garden. I wish I had this in my house. Ooh, organic cucumber. It's a little spiny though. No, no, eat it. Eat it like this? No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. You're gonna eat it? Organic. Mmm. Wow, oh, it's good. And this? Oh wow, I would eat this right here. Mmm. The burst. Wow. So much water. Oh, it was good, man. I've been to very little countries in the world where you can just like walk into their farm, in their garden, start eating. Wow. What a fresh tomato. Mmm. So juicy. So filling. I'm gonna get stuff here. Can't eat anymore. So over here we have the last onions of the garden, and to the left of it, this area, it's all leeks. And over here? Uh, you can enter to see another part of the farm of pomodorini, tomatoes, peppers, etc. <laughs> Lots of pinchy <laughs> things here. Ooh, like thorns everywhere. Oh my god. Okay, so you got more tomatoes. Red pepper, green pepper. Spicy? No, spicy we have uh, there. Cherry tomatoes. They're big. Mmm. Juicy, no sweet. Alright, I need a drink. I mean, the view here is epic. My friend, thank you. Guzur, my friend, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Cheers in Albania is Guzur. Guzur. Oh, this one's smooth. This is nice. Today I had some crazy ones. <laughs> Alright, let's go see how they make dinner. What are we doing? Here we have frog legs. So we're making frog legs. Frog legs from the lake. Yes. Amazing. Obviously. <laughs> this is for guessa. Original for guess. No. Original Albanian for guessa. A little olive oil into the fire. Tava in the fire. Yes. Okay. And then what's next? To put for guess on the tava. So the moment the olive oil gets to the surface, yeah. the tava is ready. Yes. So olive oil on top, tava is ready. The one thing you don't do is you don't touch a tava after it's been cooked because it will burn your hands off. A little butter. Uh, that is yufka. It is called yufka in Albania and uh, there are different kinds of preparation of the yufka but uh, this is the most common one. It's a pasta which they fry. It's a little different from in Italy because they add milk, right? Yeah. That's the difference between the pastas. Okay. Yeah, it looks amazing. Are similar with the salatella, no? So they never use water, only chicken stock. Obviously it gives you the juices of the chicken, changes the flavor completely. Here is the bread, cornbread we're doing here in our farm. So you're making cornbread? I don't use water. Okay, I no water. No water in the bread. I use only milk.
Now that you've got almost ready, they pull out the chicken, they cut the chicken up, so got rid of all the bones. Now they're gonna fry the chicken. Great. Oh, this dish is coming out to be amazing. Chicken with like a nice tagliatella. Yufka, yufka. Now that the chicken has been fried, she puts it into the tava on top of the yuca. They close the tava and it's done. That dish is ready. Next up, I think he's gonna put batter on the frog legs. Oh, cornbread with yogurt. Yes. So once he's done frying the bread, he puts it straight into the yogurt. He puts it down, he mixes it, and basically it starts absorbing the yogurt, leaves it there for one minute, and then it's ready. Oh, this is gonna be a good bread dish. So the frog legs is very easy. And the reason they use only the legs is because it's the only part of the frog with the meat. The torso, the arms, the head, no meat at all. So what he does, he just puts it in flour, you know, oil, flour, that's it, and then it goes into the fryer. And that's the easiest dish to make. You just gotta catch the frogs. And that's it, finish the frog legs. It is time for dinner. Oh, I can't wait for that like pasta, yuca, yuca. Okay, so this is our feast. He's gonna serve me a little bit of everything onto my plate because there's just way too many things. Over here we have the bread. Okay, as you guys see, we have a feast here. Incredible Albanian food. Everything is so different from everything else I've tried so far in Albania. I think the most unique thing here that's non-traditional are the frog legs, but then he also made the cornbread, fried cornbread with yogurt. He made that like amazing yuca pasta with chicken, chicken stock. And then over here we have the burek. This burek is actually a little different. It's not a meat pie, it's not a spinach pie, it's tomato and onions. Then here he has homemade yogurt. It's like a super thick yogurt. It almost reminds me of like a cheese or like, like a thick feta cheese, right? Next to it, obviously we have the bread. And then here we have the incredible salads. You know, it's like roasted vegetables. We have potatoes, we have broccoli, we have egg. And everything here came from this garden. Amazing. And we're trying some delicious wine. It's Albanian wine. House wine, no? House wine. Mm. Oh, it's tasty for house wine. Wow, it's good. And here we go, guys. Let's try first the yogurt. Oh, it's like nice and thick. Mm. It almost reminds me of like a, like almost like a feta cheese, but a little more sour and a little more watered down. It's really good. Mm. And this with the burek, right? I love burek. In every country it's a little different. Here they have different varieties. So basically anything that's like a pie is a burek, right? So they have the meat one, the spinach one, tomato one. This is tomato and onions. And you add some of that yogurt on top. Mm -hmm. mm. Love the burek. I've never had burek with tomato and onion. It's very different. Having the complement of the yogurt takes to another level. Nice and crispy, flaky, and filling. So this is more of a dinner burek, not really like a breakfast, so you eat it anytime, right? Any time of the day. Oh, look at that. Mm-hmm. I love the onions. So they're roasted onions, right? So for this, for the soft cheese, do I just eat it? Mm. Reminds me of like string cheese. A little salty, not too much. That's great. But next, I'm trying this. The cornbread. So this is the cornbread with yogurt. So they fry the cornbread, then they bathe it in the yogurt, and let it sit there for a minute. Mmm, way better. 
I'm a big fan of cornbread. This is like the best cornbread ever. Ever. Wow. Oh my god. I mean that yogurt, it feels amazing. I'm gonna have another one. But wait, wait, wait. It's <laughs> still got a lot to eat. And right here we have some of the veggies that have been roasted. This is gonna be great. Mm -hmm. And here we have cabbage. Lots of cabbage. So you added a red wine sauce on top of the salad. Yes, but I reduced the red wine. I put it... Mm. The red wine reduction? Yeah, red wine reduction. You just took the salad the to a different place. Juice. Exactly, it's citrusy. Hmm? Cit citrusy. <laughs> no, it's good, it's good. Orange. It's different. Okay. Una otra volta. Cheers, cheers. And here we have the tava. This one is called fergesa. So basically, red pepper, green pepper, garlic, tomato, onion, onion and ricotta cheese. This thing looks like a bomb. Look at this. And it's still super hot. You barely can touch it. Wow. Fergesa. Look at this. Oh man, it's like a creamy vegetable mash. Almost looks like eggs in there, like scrambled eggs, but it's not. Wow. Gotta be careful, it's really hot. Mm. Oh wow. The creaminess of the curl cheese. Mmm. Oh, I'm in love with it. It's too good. You feel all the peppers, and then you have the extra burst of tomato that comes at you. So it's all, everything was roasted and then mashed. Next up we have the yufka. So tayetele, right? With milk, and then they also added chicken stock. Amazing, and then they fry the chicken and add it on top. I mean, this is a very unique dish. Never seen this before. And I love how they have like pasta influence here, obviously because of the Italians. Try some of this. Mm. Oh man, it's a creamy, it's a creamy tagliatelle. Mmm, you can taste the chicken stock. Very light on the salt, no pepper. It's great. It's light. It's not too. It's not too heavy, right? Obviously, if you eat too much, but like this is perfect. And you have the chicken on the side, so I have the leg. And this chicken came from this garden, right? It's chicken. Mm. So it's fried, but it's like lightly fried. So buttery like falls off. Falls the bone. Mm. And so you eat it like just like this, right? You don't like mix the chicken with the pasta. I'm sure you can. Like get some pieces, right? Like that. Just mix it in here. Mm. It's amazing how creamy it is. And that's not cream he added later. That is just cream that is made with it. So it's milk. That's the milk, right? The milk mm. I heard the Italian food, the pastas in Albania, rival the pastas in Italy. That's what I heard. I don't know, this one's selling me. Well, you also study in Italy, right? <laughs> <laughs> the last thing we have to try are the frog legs. Again, this is non-traditional. Just because we have the lake right here, he decided one day, let me catch some frogs. Let's make some food. Lastly, we have the amazing frog legs. So you caught these. You caught these. Yes. Amazing. Mm. So good. Mm -hmm. What I love about frog legs is that you literally just take off all the meat in the bottom, and that's it. You're done. Mm. Lightly fried. They're really good. I've had frog legs a lot in South Florida. You know, we have swamp food, which is frog legs and gator tail. Mmm. Okay, with the bones. It's nice, nice meat. It's not a lot of meat, but because you have so many frogs here, you'll fill up fast. It's good. I didn't expect to be eating frog legs in Albania. <laughs> And guys, it does taste like chicken, for sure. Mmm, destroy like eight right here. The batter is light. It's not like a like a crazy fryness, no? Not too fried. I'm gonna dream about this tava. You send me this tava to Miami. Yes. Me to Miami, see? 
This is Tried. dessert. Pear with raki. Rakia. The juice is Mm hmm. Mm. It's basically a delicious pear with a strong alcoholic drink. <laughs> Oh, it's sweet. You drink the juice, then? Mmm. Yeah. So, it's basically rocky, but it's super sweet. This is a surprise. Surprise. It's not limoncello, but it's still very icy. I see it. Okay. Whoa, what was that? Okay, so this is melon liquor. It's great. I didn't notice what it was. Obviously, it's melon, so melon. Uh, I usually eat melon with prosciutto. Hasude. <laughs> and it has orange zest. It's creamy. It's a little like jello ish, right? It's tangy. It's soft. It's actually pretty amazing. It has almost textures of like. I wouldn't say panacota, but like a hard panacota. Harder. Mm. <laughs> I'm wrong. <laughs> I mean, I loved it though. This is amazing. So this came from the Ottomans, but obviously this is an Albanian dish now. And yeah, my friend, we had an amazing day today, you and me. We explored his farm. We saw the lake. We walked around. We tried everything there. I mean, tomatoes, blackberries. We blackberries. saw chickens, uh, ram, donkey. Uh, and then we went to the kitchen. And he showed me how to make four incredible dishes. I think for me, really the best thing, it was the tava, for sure. I loved it, incredible taste. But also the cornbread. Cornbread with yogurt is so different, very unique. It absorbs the yogurt. Yufka, yufka, not yuka, yufka. So it's like their type of pasta, tayatela. And they add chicken, chicken stock, and they fry the chicken, add it on top. I mean, everything was super amazing. When you're in Tirana, come out here. It's only about a 25, 30 minute drive from Tirana south. And this is Lake? Of Farca. Of Farca. Farca. Yeah. But you spell it with an E at the end, Farke. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes from the center of Tirana. 10 minutes, that's it? Yeah. Perfect. So guys, come out here, eat with my friend, and enjoy the view. Today I want to show you what Albanians eat for breakfast, which is really quick, it's fast, it's filling, it's pies. Burek. Burek is the best. I've eaten it all over the Balkans, and right here at Instant Burek, we're going to see how they make five different pies. Sausage, cheese, spinach, tomato and onion, and meat. We're going to pair that with some yogurt, then after this we're going to one of the oldest coffee shops in Tirana to have some delicious coffee and explore more of the city. Are you guys ready? Let's go eat. Annie, you ready? I'm ready. Hungry? Let's begin, of course. <laughs> and this is the back of instant burek. As you can see, these beautiful women are making yeah, incredible so burek. <laughs> They're making right now the ricotta one, right? Ricotta? Is this right here spinach? This is, this is spinach and that one there is ricotta. So there's one in the okay. Okay. So they do the dough, they open it using this, and they put the ricotta inside and they, uh, they make a triangle with it. Yeah, so this is a little different, right? This one, it's, you know, the dough is flattened. Okay, after they flatten the dough, they add a little more flour, they add cheese, they add spinach they want to, so it really depends on what they're making. But, I mean, it looks amazing. These are really, really big budeks. You know, they fit, what, how many? They fit like eight on a tray or 10 on a tray. They shove in the oven, and then how long does it bake for? 10 minutes. So once it's ready to bake, throw it in, 10 minutes, and then, as you can see, golden color, perfect. And now they're doing the burek that I know, the traditional one, which is minced meat. As you can see, minced meat right here in the middle. It almost looks like it has a gallo pinto type of sauce to it, like, you know, tomato-based sauce. And then they put it in the middle. Then they roll it up, and instead of triangle, these are uh, squares. So, like, huge squares. Wow, they look so good. I'm gonna try three. All of them, all of them for sure. So this is a long process, huh? They make all day long, 
all day long? And a lot of people come here to eat. And it's mainly breakfast? Yes. Uh, so they have different types of uh, burek. They have a uh, ricotta burek, a spin uh, spinach burek, uh, onion and tomatoes burek, and also uh, burek with meat and burek with uh, sausage. So what do you think? What do we get? All of them. All of them? All five? Okay, let's do it. So Annie, what is dala? Dala is a mixture of yogurt with uh, ice cold water and salt. It is a famous drink in Albania and uh, you will like it. So this is the perfect thing to pair with the burek. And right here we have five burek. Five! What? Crazy. And this is our five different types of burek. I am so excited. This is delicious. This is basically you know, street food, Albanian street food for breakfast. We got these pies, spinach, ricotta, tomato and onion, and we also have sausage and minced meat. Now the meats, the minced meat and the sausage, those are like this, right? So I'm pretty sure this is the minced meat. I saw them, you know, making it. And then this one's a sausage, a little thinner, you know, more like rectangle. And then obviously the other ones, the ricotta, the spinach, and the tomato and onion are in these triangle shapes. Then I'm just gonna dump on this one. So you can either just take a bite into it or break it. I'm gonna take a bite. Oh my god. Love the dough. Mmm. Baked to perfection. Look at this. All this spinach. The amount of spinach I put in here is amazing. I love it. Love all the green pies. And green, you know, I just mean like vegetables. Mmm. So dough in the middle, a little crispy on the outside. And not really crispy because it's been baked, but just enough golden color. A little flaky. Mm. This is super filling. Next one. I'm almost 100% sure this one is sausage. So I'm gonna break this one. Just to make sure. Yep, sausage right there. It almost feels like a corn dog. The hot dog isn't my favorite, but it really takes me back to like my childhood when I went to like, I don't know, a carnival or the youth fair or something, and I had a corn dog. Next one I think is the, this has to be ricotta cheese. Oh man, this is all for me? My friend Annie already had breakfast, I can't even believe it. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. the cheese one is usually my favorite. A little salty. Oh, I love the crumbly ricotta cheese. Mmm. This is more doughy. You know, to eat this like, well, the way I eat it, I fold it like that, and then take big bites. Dale, let's try it. Mm. So it's basically yogurt. Mmm, super milky. Mmm. I like it, almost like silky. So you have some of that, and you take a bite, right? And then the best thing to do is have actually a bite, and then try it. Oh yeah, that's nice. Because it basically kills the saltiness, you know? It's, I think it's probably best paired with the ricotta cheese one because of the saltiness. Still have two more to go. <laughs> this is the minced meat. Oh yeah, you can tell. Look at this. Oh. Like in the bottom, it's coming through. Nice and oily. This one, you just fold it like that. Oh my God. Mm. This is basically like a meat lover's pizza. Mmm. This is the best one. Oh my God. My mouth is just watering. Think about the next bite. Mm. You know, even though it looks like a lot of food, it's actually very airy. So it's not as filling as I expected. Obviously, you eat one, I'd say you eat two and you're good. Two. Maybe get the meat one and the ricotta one, probably the best. Ooh, this one just came out of the oven, my friend. Super flaky. On the bottom, you can see the tomato through here. I don't really suggest eating it right when it comes out of the oven because it's just way too hot, but this one I have to.
Mm. Tomato just bursted out, it's like sizzling. Oh wow. So here we have, ooh, light amount of tomato and onion. I gotta say, every burek was amazing. The one I would skip is the sausage one. Definitely gotta try the meat one, the ricotta one. So spinach one's good too, but I really like the tomato one. It's just a little too hot right now. Mmm. Nice onion, lots of tomato. Ooh, but it's way too hot. Burek in Albania. Gotta try it. I like this. The yogurt's good. Dale, dale, dale. Dale. So that E with the two dots on the top, that's ah. Uh. 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 So next we're going to one of the oldest coffee shops in Albania called Cafe Flora. And uh, this coffee has also a song that is written for it. A song? A song, yes. I've never heard of a coffee getting a song written about it. I guess the person who wrote the song loved the coffee so much. It was not more about, it was not about loving the coffee, but it was more about the, the women going to the coffee shop, same as men. Okay, okay, I got it. So David, that is our coffee. So what's it called, cafe? Cafe Flora. And it's one of the oldest coffee in Tirana. And this is Cafe Flora. Beautiful open air cafe. Huge umbrellas, lots of tables, lots of sun. I love it because you're in the center of the city, you're in between two streets, and you have this awesome cafe. And the song for this coffee was written in 1972, and this is basically just like a regular espresso, but it's made here in Cafe Flora. Can't wait to try it. Mm. Strong, no sugar, the way I like it. I'm gonna have to get another one. Ooh. Strong. That was like, almost like Turkish coffee. <laughs> and over here, we have rakia. So, like you guys have seen before, here in the Balkans, they love drinking rakia with their coffee. It makes the blood flow. It's a good way to start your day, get some energy. I love it. And this one is blackberry rakia. Oh, a lot smoother. Very fruity. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> Strong. Hey, my friend. Cheers. So, Annie, why do they drink Raki for breakfast here? Because it keeps you healthy. Yeah? Yeah, drinking Raki every morning is something that they do to keep uh, their, their body healthy and to keep uh, the day going well. So, I first learned this when I was in North Macedonia, which uh, it's North Macedonia now, it was called Macedonia. Everybody was drinking, you know, Raki for breakfast, all the older men, you know, having coffee, drinking Raki, and I was like, that's crazy. But the guy's like, no, 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 the reason they do it is because it helps your blood flow. As you get older, this helps your blood flow, you know, keeps your body warm, and gives you energy in the morning. It, it does, it definitely does. I mean, it's a strong drink, so if you don't drink, obviously, don't try Raki. But if you're into alcoholic drinks, definitely try it. Mm. And if you get the fruitier ones, which they're less here in Albania, here it's more like straight distilled grapes. But if you get the fruitier ones, the ones with honey, those are a lot easier, a lot smoother. And they're just, you know, they have more flavor, so it's easier for you to drink. Like this, blackberry, it's good, but if you have it just straight grapes, you'll be lit. This is the song. So the song is called Cafe Flora Full of Men's, written in 1972. And that's it, so it's an Albanian song. It, is, it was written during the communism period. It's, it is an Albanian song, and uh, it represents a little bit of the equality, uh, gender equality between the men and the women. Breakfast was delicious, had some great coffee, a little bit of rakia, get some energy, and now we're actually leaving Tirana, and we're driving 30 minutes east to the city of Duras, the port city. It's on the Adriatic Sea. I'm excited. Let's see if we see anything on the road. Good. Good. Let's rock and roll. Let's go. Uh, that was Cavaya Street. It is a, a very popular street in Tirana where you can find everywhere. There are hotels, the mosque, the church, uh, a lot of uh, bar cafes, open area, uh, inside restaurants, and also a lot of uh, uh, grilled restaurant meat. So the street is full of retail shops. On the top levels, that's all residential, right? Lots of residential. Then you have retail on the bottom, commercial spaces, Lots of trees here. I love that so much so much uh, so much shade when you walk You're not walking in the Sun the whole time on that street and then now we just passed 
it's another area of Tirana, and we're slowly exiting to the area where you catch a highway, right? Is it a is it a highway or what is it? Autostrada Tir the highway Tiranduras. Oh, that's what it's called. Yeah. Usually it takes 30 minutes. If there's traffic, it's 45. Along the way, there's actually a lot of things you could do. There's wineries in the area. There's eco tourism. There's farms. I mean, so much just in this area. So when people come to Tirana, they should definitely look at going to Duras as well. It's, you know, it's like a sister city. It is the poor city. Obviously, this is the capital. It's more interior. That is on the Adriatic Sea. A lot of delicious seafood there. Okay, so in Albania, when somebody gets married, they put red scarves outside of the car and they drive in a single file. Yes, the people that are invited uh, in the wedding, they put uh, some uh, a sign in their car and they drive to the wedding. Or they drive to take the bride from the house of the parents to take it in the house of the husband. And obviously red because Albania loves red. We love red, but uh, <laughs> yeah. The flag, the eagle. The flag, the eagle, but uh, we also use different kind of colors, it depends. But mostly, yes, we use the red, uh, the red scarf for the car. We've arrived to Duras, the biggest seaport in Albania. Beautiful. This is an ancient city. There's fish, there's fishermen, there's beaches. I mean, you come here, you relax. If you really want to come here in summer, you know, there's bars, I'm sure. Bars, nightlife. I mean, this is the place to come. Uh, it's where people come from Tirana, they go party by the beach, right? But also you come here and have incredible fish, seafood, and Italian food from what the people have been telling me. Lots of good Italian food, obviously big Italian influence here. So they make delicious fish with pasta, pulpo. You ready? I am ready. My friend's always ready. Let's do this. So this tower, we call it now Tora Veneziana. It is built in the 15th century and uh, it was built in the ruins of the Byzantine uh, tower that existed, built by Emperor, uh, Byzantine Emperor Anastasius I. It has a diameter of 16 meters and altitude of 9 meters and uh, for a very very long time now in the city of Dursi it is known as a bar cafe. And it connects to the walls. And also connected it was part of the Byzantine walls uh, that uh, surrounded the city of uh, Dursi. So these are really really high walls and these are the Roman walls right? Yeah. Roman Byzantine walls. But after they have been reconstructed many times uh, they have been reconstructed by Justinian. And if you guys don't know about history the Roman Empire had a huge domination 2,000 years ago, right? They owned all of Europe, Northern Africa, the Middle East. They broke off East and West. East became known as the Byzantine Empire. Why? Because the first emperor of the Byzantine Empire was Constantine the Great from Niche, Serbia, and he was also a Christian. He was the first emperor to be converted to Christianity. And the capital was in Constantinople, which is nowadays Istanbul. But this is huge walls, ancient, obviously reconstructed. They've fixed it up. Beautiful. And it's just this part, right? It's not like the whole city, it's just like this area has the walls. Yeah, this is the only part that remains. My friend, there was an earthquake recently? Earthquake in uh, November. And uh, the epicenter was the city of Duras. And uh, the walls that you see now, uh, part of the surrounding walls of uh, Duras has been uh, destroyed. So now they're working out to reconstruct again the, the surrounding walls. So you follow the walls, and when you get to this arch, you cross in, and the Roman amphitheater is right over here to the left. Yes. Wow. This is the amphitheater of Duras, built in the 2nd century by Emperor Trajan, and as you can see, all rubble. Right here we have buildings, over there we have the amphitheater. The difference between an amphitheater and a theater is a theater, there's a stage, amphitheater goes completely around. A little different, right? And you have modern day buildings everywhere, so they can't really excavate deep into the area. This is what you got. Let's go inside, let's see it. As soon as you walk into the amphitheater, go straight to the right and you get this beautiful view over the entire thing. Over to the top, you have houses, you have a mosque, a minaret, then you have different layers, right? So there's like three different levels. You can go all the way to the top, you can go to the middle, and you can go to the bottom. And here you have, you know, grass and trees. They put some light so it's lit up at night. What's funny is that like 2,000 years ago, people would walk up and down this and the stairs were like this thin. <laughs> yeah, right here we have part of the original stairs. Over here, these are like hallways, right? They connect to each other. So one thing Annie was telling me is that right here in this hallway, it feels very like low. Seating level is very low, but the reason is because they couldn't excavate deeper because if you go just another foot deep, you're already hitting the water. The sea level has risen in 2,000 years. 
Annie, you were telling me this place was converted into a church at some point in its history? At, fi uh, at the 5th century, yes, it, it is converted to a church. And uh, the main object that proves it are um, the little chapel that we see here. In the 5th century, the Emperor Hanor stopped the gladiators from fighting. He basically shut down this place, said no more gladiators, and then he converted it into a church. And right here we have a tiny chapel. Oh, wow, and you have mosaic right here. Yes. Oh, wow, that is gorgeous. This is super unique. I've never seen this in any of the amphitheaters I've ever been to. I've been to so many, never seen a church inside. So, David, this is the well. This is where the people get baptized. As soon as you walk out, you can see right here in the middle, basically the grass has grown. And when they converted this into a church, they also turned this area into a graveyard for some of the members of the church. So, obviously, no more fighting in here. So they turn it into a graveyard. And over here you can see all the seats of the amphitheater. You know, obviously they haven't fixed them right here. This is all, you know, reconstructed, restored over there. It's just falling apart. But I love it because that's the real authenticness to it. You know, it's still ancient. It's gone through so much. This was completely covered until 1966. That blows my mind because imagine in 1966, people were just walking through here, walking over it. They didn't even notice. This tunnel right here is thought to have been the emperor's entrance. As you can see, huge tunnel, super high ceilings, very wide. He would obviously come through here with a chariot, I'm sure, with horses, come all the way through. It's huge. It's pretty good. It's pretty intact. I mean, comparison to the rest of it, everything looks better. I mean, obviously up there, they fixed it up a little bit here as well, but these are the original stones. So if you want to enter the amphitheater, you can. You can go to the bottom and you come right back up. There's actually no way to get to the middle or the top. So if you want to get a higher view, you go straight outside and you go on the street that's right above the amphitheater. And from there you get epic views as well. It's pretty incredible. I've been to so many amphitheaters and Roman ruins around the world and I've never seen one like this. Like in the center of the city, like you literally could live right here and this is your view behind you. <laughs> what a view. Wow. The amphitheater, the city, the moss, the sea, beautiful. It is scorching right now. August here in Albania is really, really hot, especially along the coast. If you're going to the mountains, colder, but here, really hot. I mean, priceless views. I would definitely buy an apartment here. Most people that come to see the amphitheater don't actually go inside. They stay outside, they get this view, they get their photos, and they go. But I suggest going inside, taking a tour around, seeing the chapel, going to the tunnel, the emperor's tunnel, and that's it. Okay, let's keep exploring. I'm getting really hungry. I can't wait to eat some fish. Now we are going to eat in a small restaurant uh, called Ferra. Ferra? Ferra, yes. So it's just fish. Fish and other uh, food. Hungry, hungry fish. Duras is a beautiful beach town. Lots of buildings, palm trees. The beach is right here. And along the beach, there's restaurants, lounges, cafes. And people from Toronto will come here. They go to the beach. They'll have some fish. And that's it. And maybe on the weekend, they might come here and go out at night. Lots of bars. Nightlife is, is really popping here. So, And yeah, I'm hungry. I need some fish. It's already 1 p.m. And it's hot. And she's saying, this is not that hot. This is like mild. It usually gets really, really, really hot in Albania. And here we are. The restaurant is right next to the beach. This beach is packed. Wow, lots of people here. I mean, obviously it is August, right? So this is restaurant Fera. It's here on the boardwalk right next to the beach. Let's go inside. So as soon as you walk into the restaurant, you walk up the stairway and over here to the left and the right is a dining hall. Over here to the right, we also have the fish, the fish that they bought today. So they keep it on ice, you have clams, you have huge fish, you have shrimp, wow, mussels, crabs, oh I can't wait. And they also have some pastas here, because obviously the Italian influence, so they have pastas, so you can have like linguine a bongole, so like clams and linguine, super good. I don't know, we're gonna get some a mix of stuff, all seafood, all fresh fish, right here from the Adriatic Sea. I love when you eat fish and you can see the actual sea. It's the best. All right, we're in the back and here we go. All the fish, crab, wow, risotto. Oh, that looks amazing. The mussels being steamed. Ciao.
The chef just let me know that this huge monstrous plate of mussels costs 400 lakh, which is four, roughly four US dollars for this plate. I want this plate, like right now. This is the best. And here we have cheese, we have vegetables. I mean, they have never any stuff. We have crochetta right there, bruschetta, bruschetta, no? Bruschetta, bruschetta, bruschetta. Ma che dico adesso? Sto parlando in italiano? Peggio, peggio. <laughs> Vuoi parlare italiano? No? Un poco? They're currently making like 20 things here. They're doing the mussels. They're doing a huge seafood dish here that is like shrimp, squid, what else is in there? Uh, the squid and octopus. They also have clams in there. Next to it, he's making some like soup. Over there, he's making linguine, he's frying fish. And then over here, I mean, just like never ending amount of stuff happening. For me, what I'm most excited about has to be these mussels. Four US dollars for this. I mean, unreal. Look at our seafood feast. What an incredible amount of food. We have the seafood linguine. Over here, we have shrimp tartare, basically, crudo. Over there we have octopus crudo, so all raw. Then we have mussels, steamed mussels. Over there we have bruschetta. And then we have fish, grilled and fried. Amazing. I'm gonna start off with linguine. Oh, I'm starving. I cannot wait to eat some pasta. And these guys don't hold back. I mean, they give you a lot of linguine. Look at this. The amount of seafood in here is insane. It's so like overloaded. It's amazing. Shrimp, squid, mussels. Just get whatever you want, like a big bite like that. Yes, yes, yes. This pasta, this is like one of the best pastas I've ever had. This is insane. My God, I've eaten so much pasta in Italy. I gotta say, this is unreal. Wow, it's like creamy. You can taste the seafood, it's salty in there. Mm. I was told that Albania is like the second best place in the world to eat Italian food. And they're right. Wow. I'm in awe right now. This is too good. I'm gonna just destroy this whole plate right now. So now I'm gonna get a mix of all the different seafood. Got shrimp, got some tentacles there. You know what it is? It's the freshness of the seafood. The fresher it is, the better it is. And there's no better way to eat seafood than looking over at the sea, the ocean, and you have to pair your seafood with some white wine. White wine from the area, this is called duca. Mm. That's another thing that people don't know about. The wines in Albania are phenomenal. People don't know about the wines in the Balkans, mainly because they don't export so much. It's sold internally, and it's it's like, you've never tasted these flavors before. You know, I have a big plate of mussels, but I would never leave these. I usually try to get like two or three, pull them out. Like mm-hmm. Mix a little bit of pasta in here more seafood and Annie serves me everything we have on the table we have the grilled and fried fish we have the amazing mussels never any amount of mussels this is gonna be the best bruschetta we have a squid and we have shrimp I'm gonna jump on a shrimp this all it has is marination <gasps> That's the most delicious succulent thing I ever had. Mm. Oh wow. Everything was so good. It was like tangy, citrusy. Oh man. Okay, I'm gonna have the other one. This is too good. This? It's been a while since I've eaten seafood this good. Like, 
It's been so long. I'm from Miami. We have seafood, but we don't have it this fresh. We don't have it this basic. Because the thing about it is that this is just straight from sea here, and all they added here was oil. That's it. I'm gonna have some of this. Grew little octopus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just oil, also fresh. Not too thick, nice and dense. Mm -mm. Oh my God. The one thing you have to do in your life, you come to Duras and have some seafood. If you like seafood, add to your bucket list now. Next up, let's dive on all these mussels. I go really fast with them. That was empty. Mm -hmm. And remember, if they're still closed, like tightly closed, don't eat it. That means the muscle's not good. But all these are so nice. And if you go to the bottom, bottom very south of Albania, there's actually a muscle farm right there, right in front of Corfu. Mmm. I'm gonna have to have more of these. I can eat like a thousand of these. Every bite. I know, I know. That's the best part is that we have this entire, like, you know what? And if you want to go like crazy, you go in here and you get some of this, right? Mm. Wow. It's like a muscle broth. Oh man, I need more. I need so much more. This is, I can't even believe how much this plate costs here. Anywhere else in the world, it would cost way more. Wow. I'm gonna eat so many of these. Mmm. Let's go non stop, guys. And see, this one is almost closed, but not quite closed. So it's still good. Don't leave any. Not one. The good thing is that that plate, I can eat the whole thing. And I won't be full at all. This might be the best seafood I ever had in my life. It might be. Like, goddamn. And then here we have the bruschetta. Mm. Bread, always the same. On top, they added tomato and some cheese. Tomato has basically gone down. It's like been absorbed by the bread. Super mushy. Wow. Mm. Questo è come Italia. Lo stesso. And lastly, we have the fish. This one's really easy. Just gotta open it, right? And what you see right there is the spine, and the spine has all the, the bones, the little spines, right? So you open up at that, take off this. As you do that, you get all the flesh. You gotta be really careful, guys. Remember, you don't wanna get a spine stuck in your throat. I've been in a situation before, never again would it happen. For this one, it's easy. Just go. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oils burst out. You have the crunchiness because of the fried. Mm. And then we have this fish, which has been on the grill. And again, with this one, you probably just go the same. Just go in. Wow, the amount of spines I just went through is crazy. And then you just. Mmm. I love the fish. I don't even know what fish this is, but. Mmm. Nice and meaty. So, taste off. Spines right there. Go on the side. Get rid of all the spines. And then pull from the middle. All that flesh. So I think this one was baked. This one wasn't fried. Mm-hmm. Each fish has a different taste. You have the fried one, the grilled one, and the baked one. Mm. So much meat. Guys, I think I'm done, but I'll eat some more of these mussels. Let's end it with this. Mmm. It's too delicious. This, the view, and wine. 
I gotta say, this day in Duras has been epic. Even though it was a short day, only a few hours, we explored, we saw the walls, the tower, Roman amphitheater, really amazing. Going up to the top, seeing it from you know somebody's balcony basically, beautiful view. When we came over here, explored the restaurant, saw a little bit of the beach, and ate lots and lots of seafood. It's part of the best pasta, seafood pasta I ever had. I mean, I've had amazing ones in Italy, but this one was so good. And right now, I'm literally going all out. I've had like 20 muscles in a row. All right, where else am I gonna put it? Keep going. Oh my God, and this has a little bit of garlic. Mm. When you're in Albania, come to Duras, eat seafood, see the beach, see the ruins, and drink the wine. All right. Hello, hello. Hello, welcome. Pleasure, welcome. pleasure. I'm excited. We are excited too, and welcome in the George Castriotti Scanderbeo Winery and Distillery. I am the degustation leader, and also I will be with you during the tour to explain all the, our products and also our agro-tourism section, which is located near the wine yards. As we start walking through the winery, over here to the right, we have all their awards. They've won tons of awards, a few dozen awards. And over here to the left, we have a mix of different things they produce. So we have three different styles of raki. We have like the Primativo, which is like one of their best, right? That's a delicious grape from Italy, but they you know, obviously make it here. Over here, some more wines. And then they have brandy. This is their famous brandy. I'm gonna try that. So here we have some pictures. Uh, from the old winery, since communism or even earlier. We have some trucks here uh, which are doing the exportation of our products. And also, here are some workers uh, doing their job, but in very old appliances. Here we have some ruins of the old winery and then all the other basements we have in this winery inherited until nowadays. Now we're going directly into the basement. You said we're gonna be able to actually try some wine directly There's from barrels, right? I think it will be brandy. Brandy? Yeah. What? She said I'm gonna be able to try brandy directly from here. So basically what's inside here are like these, right? Or no, these are just walls. Uh, no, there is the product inside. Yeah, yeah, but the product, but this is inside that? Or no, just walls? No, 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 no. Just walls? Walls, yeah. Walls, I've never seen this. This is... Well, it's made of concrete and yeah. inside is painted with uh, good for food color is called in food uh, yeah, industry. Food color. Yeah. So this appliance here shows the level. Here is located the level meter and shows that up to here is uh, the raki. The level of the alcohol because the brandy has color. These were constructed in the 1980s in this like huge box, right? Over here you have more modern type of uh, fermented uh, stainless steel tanks, right? And then over here, we're gonna see brandy. This is, we're gonna pour brandy from here. So this is the brandy premium, which is made only from the very best uh, varieties of grapes we have in our wine yards. And it's only from white varieties, from Chardonnay, from Riesling, and also from Muscat grapes. That's why it's a premium. I mean, it's like smooth. Yeah, it's very smooth because of the, its age. Yeah. It's aged minimum five years. Okay. And um, so tell me, why is this not cognac? What's the it's reason? It's not cognac because the cognac is only patented from the region of France, from the region of cognac in France, and all the other countries and cities which produce this brandy, this cognac, uh, should, be, uh, should be calling it brandy. Brandy, yeah. that's it. Just brandy. Just like champagne, Everywhere. same yeah. thing. Just like with the champagne. Okay, so we are near the barrels. Uh, we use barrels for our brandies, for the aging process, and also for our wines, for the red wines. We use mostly two kinds of oak barrels. We use the American oak for the more intense aroma of the oak in our beverages, and also the French oak for the most delicate uh, aroma and taste. So next we are going to visit our wine yards and also our small agro-tourism we have with our traditional food, and we are going to do the degustation section there. This area is full of wineries or just yours? Uh, no, just our wineries there. And uh, we own most of the wineyards, around 54 hectares of wineyards, with different origin kind of grapes, like Italian, French, German, and of course our autochthon varieties. 
Oh, oh, where, where's the brandy? Where's the brandy? People <laughs> like you. <laughs> you good? Everything Thank good? You. Nice. Thank you very much. Awesome. And this is their resort. As you can see, beautiful buildings. Love it. Pool all around here. Barrels. Amazing. They have an area over here for kids. In the back, they have all the vines. All the vines. Vineyard. Incredible. And it just, it just opened only one year ago today. So they're having an anniversary party tomorrow. This is just beautiful. This is like the best. Look at this. You know, open terrace. Relax. It's windy. Have some brandy. Have some rakia. Try some delicious Albanian wines. Guys, I am so happy to be in Albania. Wow. So you guys have horses? Baby horse. A baby Just horse? Born, yeah. No. Two hours ago the baby was born? No, quest, eh? Ah, bello, bello. Ah, Madonna. Oh my god. No, he was wait, wait. So he was really born one week ago, but he's or she's a beauty. Look at that. Wow, and the mother's being really aggressive, like we can't even get near because she'll like kick us. But yeah, the baby's right here, beautiful. So we have here everything. That's the best part about Albania. It's always like farm to table, always. I mean, most places I've gone so far, it's been like that. So you see, you know, whatever they're producing and that goes straight to your table. So now we made it here to the vineyards. Everything here you see is theirs. How many hectares? We have around 45 hectares with different varieties of grapes. Here we have the Chardonnay grapes, which are grown in our vineyards. If you guys didn't know, Chardonnay is one of the grapes that makes champagne. They don't produce champagne here, obviously. Do you produce sparkling wine? No, no? not yet, but we are doing some research to produce a really qualitative champagne. Uh, not champagne, but spumante in uh, the recent years. Harvest is between late August and like early October, late October. You know, the reds start earlier, whites later. And here we have some grapes. Mm-hmm. They're yellower, they're sweeter. If they're less, you know, yellow, like more green, they're sour. Yeah. Because it contains more acidity. Yeah. No, uh, but like, like this yeah. one is super sour. Yeah. Cows there. You have cows there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you can see it. I mean, you guys have everything here. It's a real farm. You have ducks. Yeah, we have ducks. Also babies. Babies. We have ships over here. Ships? Yeah. Can we see it? But even baby ones. Oh my god. Look at this. Look at the amount of sheep in here. Incredible. Easily like four dozen sheep. They're all eating hay. And obviously lots of flies everywhere because there's manure. Whoa. Oh, and the goats over there? Fig. Fig. The best. Lo manjo. Is it ready? Oh man, the inside. Mm. You can eat it even with this, but I prefer without. So we have another variety here. This is the Albanian autochton variety, and it's called Sheshizi. And you can translate it like the black place square. Sheshizi. Sheshizi. And here it is. Can I try one? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's not harvest yet. Not so bad. Right. <laughs> Pretty good. A little sweet, but obviously a little bit at the same time. It's like, it's almost there. 45 hectares, every section is a different grape. And this one is the Negra Mano. Negro Amaro. Negro Amaro. It's a red variety of grape, but this rosé wine is produced to put the juice in a really short contact with the, uh, the skins in order to produce it. Uh, not a very red wine, but a rosé, which is in the middle of the white and the red wine. All right, guys, we're gonna go quickly up to the top of the vineyards to get a better view of the entire, like, estate. This is amazing. 
huge, huge area with the drone you can see, I mean, just never ending fields of grapes. We are going to the top of the hill. As you can see, we're getting to the top and you can see over the entire fields, lots of hills in the area, beautiful farms. <laughs> this is the only vineyard, so the only vines you see here are to this winery. It's incredible. And the problem is people don't know about Albanian wines, mainly because they don't export because people are more, more buying like Italian, French. People don't buy like a Bulgaria, Serbia, Greek, not that many, unless you're going to a restaurant for that cuisine. The temperature here is very high during this period of the year during summertime but compared to the city it uh, is like 10 degrees up to the average temperature all right so we made it to the top look at this view incredible all the vineyards 44 45 hectares over there we have the resort and here we have a ton of grapes I don't know what grape this is but it's pretty good I think it's ready I really think it's ready mmm super sweet what grape is this? I think this one here is uh, Sheshezi, the Albanian grape. Whoa. And it's an autochton grape, which is found only in Albania. Now we're done with the vineyards. We're going to try some wines, some Raki, some brandy. Oh. It is finally time to try some wines. Brandy, my favorite, yes. Rakia. Rakia, imiore, imiore. <laughs> we are going to do a small introduction of all our products. This resort is amazing. Nine rooms, but the pool area is like incredible. Wow, just going over there, relaxing with your family, coming inside, trying some wine, some brandy, and then eating. They actually have a humongous lamb outside we're gonna eat for dinner. And over here we have all the stuff we're trying. So I think it's like, I think she said like six different wines and a few different brandies and riakias. Okay, so I'm starting off with their white wines. Five white wines. This one is El Genero, which is Chardonnay. Okay, Chardonnay. They usually give you a little less. They gave me a little more. <laughs> mm. Yeah, Chardonnay. It's great. Summer. A little fruity. I like it. This is Suave de Viver and it's Moscat grape. So Moscat, it comes from, I think it comes from Sicily, am I wrong? Yeah, right? Mmm, love it. Very sweet. Sweet dry, right? Yeah. Mmm, this is a star for me. So this is the sweetest wine they have. It's very light. Same time, you can taste the sugar. It's another great one. What I love about the whites, especially being in the heat, is that it cools you down. Obviously, the best thing to do with this is to you know, eat some fish, drink some white wine by the sea. Perfect. So this is Malvesa grape, which is a grape found in Albania. Okay, so this is like the top, top, top of all the whites. Mm. Oh yeah, different level. Also, the, 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 it was a lot cooler like it was almost freezing this one mmm okay I feel like it's a little earthy too you know yes, it is. a little more earth in here okay, it's you know you can obviously if you look at them all they look the same but very different taste all of them I like this I love you know indigenous grapes these are grapes that you'll never try anywhere else in the world unless you come here this one you have to try I mean, I've tried them all, but. <laughs> okay, this one? Oh, so Riesling. Love Riesling. German grape. Wow. That flows down easily. This is why I like Riesling. It's another great one for like super hot weather. Drink all day. The Albanian Shishi Bar. Last but not least. You know, this, like the difference in taste between these two and those three is so different. You feel more earth, but you also have different, I don't know if it's like a spice, I don't know exactly what it is, but it's just a different a flavor, really, you know? And here we have four amazing reds. So, this one is Merlot, Primativo, Sheshibe, Sheshibar, Sheshizi, Sheshizi, so it's a local grape. And then here we have the cab, the cab, okay. So Cabernet Sauvignon, okay. 
This is really big out in Napa Valley. I learned a lot about this one. So, let's start off with the Merlot. Oh my god, this smells ridiculous. Mmm. Nice full body wine. Well, I guess I have to compare them all to see what the differences are. Because I know I love this one, Primativo. So this is a grape out of Puglia, Italy, right? So I've had a, a few wines from there. Really good wines. It's amazing. So in this one, it's a little earthy. I guess you have somewhat fruit, but not like not like crazy. And it's a dark full body. Like you see the darkness in it. Wow. And this is your favorite, right? This is your favorite. Yes, it is. And this is the Shashi Le? Shashi Le? We are not laughing. Shashi Le? Somebody. Sorry, guys, this is, this is a lot of wine being drank around here. Mmm. <laughs> it's so different. You have nice, like, earthy, like, notes here. I'm not a sommelier, you know? It's hard to, like, really bring out what it tastes like. But for you, what would this one taste like? It's not very dry wine. I can feel the tannins, but not very hard, just like the Primitivo. It's really nice wine. Cinnamon, plums, really good wine. This is local grape, and this is the last of the reds. The Cab, let's go. Oh man, this is like, this is a heavier drink. That's one thing with the Cabs, they're always, a lot stronger, right? Deeper, but this is the strongest one, the Primativo, yeah, okay. in, in terms of alcohol percentage. This is very fruity. Yeah, this is super fruity. This is like, so, you know, the hard thing here is that there's like different spices and different fruits at the same time. And then one's more drier, one's more sweeter. So you have a, a mix, right? I think personally, my favorites was the Primativo and this one. Yeah, this one's awesome. All right, dinner is served. I'm going light tonight, so it's a lot of food. We have sausage, 100% beef sausage. Mm. Mm. So good. Pergesa with veal. Wow. I thought yesterday's Pergesa was was good. This one is outstanding. Next up, we have the Tava with liver, kidney, basically all organs. Mm. I've actually been eating this on the side between all the wine. We need it. Oh my god, the best. Mm, mm, mm. One in the morning. <laughs> uh huh. Mm. And right here we have veal. And I guess it has like a tomato sauce on top, right? Looks, looks good. Very nice. If you guys are into beef, gotta eat the veal. The veal is the baby cow. Only drinks milk. Mm. Mm. I love the tomato sauce on top. Some carrots, right? Onions. And right here we have the yummy, yummy lamb. It's time for the lamb. And what is this? Is that like the collarbone? Oh, it's like the spine. Mm. So this lamb was roasted for five hours. It just like falls apart. This food is ridiculous. Mm, so fresh. Doing my last round of alcohol. Crazy. We have rose, premium brandy, regular brandy. This is like the orange, citrusy liquor, but 40%. Fermanet. Then we have three Rockies. This one, I think, what was this? Muscat. This is regular grapes. And this is from Plums. Starting with the rose. Mm. Another amazing summer drink, you know, this is between red and white. I could drink this all day. You know what this rosé looks like? It looks more orange than red. I guess maybe the light. Yeah. This one's like a dry, 
fruity rosé. Next up we have the premium brandy. This is 12 euros a bottle, aged five years. This is absolutely amazing. Look at this. Smooth, I don't even taste the alcohol level. If you go down to the regular brandy, then you feel it, you know? It's less, you know, less aged, right? Whew. There you feel the alcohol hits you. It goes up into your, you know, <laughs> your esophagus. Feeling your nose. It's good though. I, I, I'm a big fan of brandy. This is the orange liquor rakia. I mean, it's in between there. 40% proof. This is like an orange limoncello. Instead of the lemons, you have the orange. Next up, we have the fernet. Similar to Jägermeister, but different. So my friend's telling me this is really good for digestion. So this is basically a chupito, you know, at the end of the meal, take a little bit and you're fine. Your stomach is coated and you won't feel bad that night. But now for the big boys. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Plums. Oh, it's good. This is straight grapes, Albanian style. Strong. Mm. This is really good with a little coffee. And this is different. This is rakia made out of Moscato grapes. Moscato. Mmm. It was actually really enjoyable. So, it's lighter, more sugar and really high alcohol. All right, we did it. We experienced the Skanderbeer Winery, oldest and biggest winery in all of Albania. Yes. Located in Duras. Yeah, in the small village of Rajbul, where is located the production and the storage place. And then the wine yards are located in the small village of Arapai, around 10 kilometers from Rajbul. So when people come, they go there, they can see the production, they can see the cellar, the big, huge squares that are full of distilled everything. You have a rakia, you have brandy, and then from there you can come here. So you can stay here, nine rooms. Yes. You have a pool, you have the vineyards, you have the farm, sheep, ducks. I mean, it's just like a real experience. And then you can do this entire tasting. <laughs> <laughs> I tasted so many different wines, different rakias, different brandies, and then uh, we have Fermanet and what do we call this one? This is Ponch. 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 Uh, completely natural from the orange skins. This is crazy good. That's like insanely good. So we experienced it. You can do this as well. If you come to Tirana, drive over to Duras, only a 30 minute drive, stay here one, two, three nights, bring your family and you can go through the whole experience. Go through the vineyards, come, relax by the pool, eat some food, drink some wine, brandy, rakia. Are you hungry? I am so hungry. Let's <laughs> begin. Hi, David. This is Bleda from Restaurant Mojil, the owner and the chef. And let me show you, give you a tour of the restaurant. We have a drink that he just gave me. This is made out of cherries, right? Yes, Cornelian cherry. The restaurant is called Mojil because we have three meals. Basically, we do everything here. Uh, all the flowers, flour that we use for the bread, for the pasta. As you can see here, this is called yufka, which is Albanian traditional pasta. It's like tagatelle, but we add uh, <clears throat> meal to that. So, as you see, it's like exactly the, the Miller house or Miller room that we have everything here. Uh, so, you put the rye on top of the mill yeah, and yeah. then it goes down between two stones. Okay. And then that goes inside the two stones and then comes out the flour that we use for the pasta, for the bread, cakes, and everything. The speed of the flour of the cereal that goes inside, if right. it goes too much at the time, the flour becomes out thicker. If it goes slower, it means the time uh, the, between two stones is more uh, longer and then the flour comes out slowly and more thinner. So that's how they make their breads and their pastas. They're actually not really a breakfast place. It's more of a restaurant, yes. lunch and dinner. Yes. But today he's making me a traditional breakfast. Petka, yes. Petka is a... Uh, it's like a yufka, but we, we, we crumble it like this. 
the, and then the difference between us and the rest of the uh, restaurants we don't boil the pasta we pan fry every pasta so we pan fry the pasta with olive oil butter and we keep adding stuff we treat it like a risotto and this is cornelian cherry juice That was so amazing. <laughs> we have some more. Oh, I need more. <laughs> I need more. Mm. A little sour, but yes. nice. We're not only a restaurant, we also uh, have bread for the guests who want to take it at home. So this is a normal uh, bread, uh, with like wheat. This is a, uh, rye and this is oat, I think. Okay, yeah, oat. Yeah, this is like a small cake. Okay, so basically you're like a bakery over here. Yeah, bakery and a, sh and a restaurant. So we are in the entrance. We have a, we are a, we are a bakery, and then we have the re ten tables in the restaurant. So the restaurants never open for breakfast. They're doing this especially for me. So when you guys come, come here, buy some bread, buy some muffins. They also have honey. They have sun dried tomatoes. These look amazing. Look at this. <sighs> this is the best. And this is the dining hall. The main dining hall is like a nordic inspired spot so it's all wood and the tables what's really cool is you you know you sit down you open right here and you have your spoon your fork your knife your napkin very homey feel this is like nordic rustic vikings yes. <laughs> and you have like forever wine right we have all the wineries are from albania so we do, we we have kalmet kalmet is an authentic albanian grape that is come from north of albania and we have Arbury, which is Kalmet as well, the other parts of Albania, Mirdita. We have this one from Berat. In case you guys don't know where all these places are, I'm going there to all of them on this trip, so you learn about it now. So we have in a lot of dough, doughy dishes. We start with a, with a uh, lacquer, which is with two layers of pastry inside tomato we have petka which is made with our uh, with, uh, with our flour petka and, and butter basically pan fried and cooked we have uh, trahana which is uh, crushed like a bulgur or a porridge grains and then boiled cheese on top of course we are in Balkans as a main course let's say really heavy breakfast which is called bra uh, pache braised baby veal a lot of tongues and brains and beef cheek inside. First thing I'm gonna start with is the tahana. Over 1,000 different varieties. So basically, it's vulgar, right? Oh wow, look at that. You can see the grains. Cheese, so you just mix it in, right? And the cheese is basically, I can, I can like smell it. It's like salty goat cheese. Mmm. It's good. It's light, healthy, person like I, I eat this, and that's it. You know, just like have a super light breakfast. Mmm. Another combination of textures with the saltiness of the cheese. Because if you just had it alone, it'd be a little bland, right? Yeah. So you have to have some cheese in there instead of some sauce. Mmm. I'm personally a big like grits guy. You know, grits. So this is similar in a way. But this one, it's not watered down like at all. This is more like pasty. Yeah. I think what I'm most excited for is the pasta. Mm. We crush the grains in the meal, not not like in the same technique we make the flour, but more thicker. And then we leave with the milk uh, to ferment, and then we open to dry in the sun. I'm very very excited for this one, petka. So it's like a type of pasta. It looks creamy. It almost reminds me of just like a, a pasta you see in Italy, but this one is, it's more like, instead of being long, it's more like squares, right? Matagliati, okay, is it, yeah, similar to that, right? And you said just butter in here. Butter, yes. Just mad butter. Mmm. It's perfect. You saying also, sometimes they have duck in it, right? Yeah, this would be amazing with the mushroom. This is from the Korcha area, which is South Albania, so that's south of uh, Lake Ored, right there, almost on the border with Greece, right? This a lot for breakfast? Ah, uh, yes. Mmm. I feel like this is the hangover cure. It's, it's light in terms of taste. It's definitely gonna be really filling if you eat the whole bowl, right? 
in Albania, it really depends on the region if they use butter or more oil. Obviously, because Korch is in the mountains, you know, it's gonna be really cold over there, so they use a lot of butter, something to warm you up, right? So then there's obviously like almost no olives down there, right? Mm. So this dish comes from the north of Albania and it has various names. It looks like a pizza, obviously, so it's layers of dough and inside is tomato. So what I do is open it up, basically like very similar to a pizza, right? Yeah, it's like also burek. Mm -hmm. mm. It almost feels like the crust of a pizza, but with multiple layers. And this is another breakfast item. Yeah, I mean, in you terms can eat of... for lunch as well, but normally the burek and this one is... This for breakfast, breakfast, yeah. What I like the most about all these dishes, they're all very unique. And obviously, all dough, right? Pasta, bogo wheat, and then you have this dough. And this almost feels similar like to the pasta, in a sense like a uh, texture. different texture though. Wow, this is great. You can add other fillings, I'm sure, right? This is just yeah, tomato. Normally it's done with a, with a wild spinach. Yeah. So this is bows. Bows means in, in Turkish something gone off. So basically it's an Ottoman in, uh, influence. And it's a, it's a fermented corn or mice drink. Uh, we use it for, for uh, also as a, as a dessert. First time trying fermented corn. Mm, okay, I've actually tried this before. Okay, yeah. it's, it, not, not exactly this, but something similar in uh, in Lesotho in Africa. Oh yeah, because they, they use a lot of this, a lot of maize, yeah. you know, a lot of corn. Yeah, it's uh, it's thick, it's a little bitter, alcoholic, right? Yeah. This is the dish I was most excited for, bache. So basically, it's a soup that had the veal head braised veal head in it for five hours so yeah. the broth is going to be amazing there's also other organs in there there's some spices there's pepper there's a spoon at let's try it mm. lots of flesh in here oh this is amazing man oh this is too good mmm good taste of pepper lots of black pepper oh incredible wow what a delicious stock as I said before, it's the veal head. So every single thing in the head is in here. Brains, cheek, uh, you know, this gland. What else? I mean, basically everything. The tongue, the tongue. The tongue. I, I think I'm gonna get the tongue now, let me see. I don't know what that was, but it was delicious. I think that was like a big piece of fat, maybe the gland on oh, this. Oh my god, it's so tasty. This is like the ultimate hangover cure. <laughs> my friend's saying this is something scary from the head, but I don't know. It looks scary, it's just another organ. Oh my god, that was like pure butter. I'm in love with this one, man. I know some people think it's like an exotic dish, but I think this is a very hearty meal. This is something that will save your life in a way, you know? Mmm. The amount of flesh you guys have in this dish is crazy. It's crazy good. Wow. I think this might be the tongue, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's spicy. Black pepper. But it's really spicy. Yeah. Mm. And then at the end, you know? Just do this. That broth is like... One of the best ever. We have a big pot so you can, you can... Yeah, yeah, you know, give me some more. Every piece of flesh you get in here, it's from the head. As we know that the, the head has seven different types of meat or muscles. So you get you get everything here, like the sweet breads. This is the one part of the cheek, the tongue, somewhere here or in the big pot, the brains. So everything from the head is boiled, so it's taken off the big bones and made into pieces. And yeah, we had some spices. I have to try it as well. Mm. It's not bad. Like my friend said, seven different layers of flesh, right? And this might be, I don't know what it is, but it's good. Mm. Well, because you feel the muscle, you feel flesh, and you feel fat. Well, and here we have dessert. So I got the same thing, but this one, has milk ice cream. Vanilla, right? Plain, no, nothing, no flavor. Nothing, no mm. flavor? 
Mm. I can taste the milk out of that. Oh my god. You taste the milk. Taste the corn. So that the, <clears throat> that's why the, oh, the, wow. the corn is sour, so it, it, it goes well with the sweetness of the milk. Mm -hmm. like yeah, because it's like a sour drink with nice cold milk ice cream. And it's funny because this is uh, it's like flavor it's like there's no flavor here. Yeah. It's just like plain. You have to feel the the, the, the milk. Mm -hmm. Oh man. And that's handmade ice cream, right? Wow. Everything's been so unique, man. This is awesome. Let it melt a little bit. And you drink, right? Mm. I love it with the ice cream. It makes more sense because it's... My man, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Pleasure. And I love your it. time in Albania. No, it was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Come back for Pacha. <laughs> for sure, for sure. This guy's killing it with the food. Wow, slow food, all by the mill. So basically, pastas, that soup was the best soup of all time. The cure. I felt a little weird this morning, felt a little bad, but that thing saved my life. <laughs> So anyway, what's the name of this park? Uh, this is the Park of Tirana. The Park of Tirana, park next of Tirana. to the Lake of Tirana. Yeah, next to the Lake of Tirana, also called the Lungs of Tirana. Okay, and it's like really near the Mother Teresa Square, correct? Uh, near Mother Teresa Square. I okay, guess. perfect. And what do people do here? Uh, they came here. They come here a lot uh, to but take a walk, to take a coffee, uh, to exercise, to run. Uh, and also to take uh, children out because there is also a kids park there. Yeah, there's a kids park there. There's a little gymnastics area. People are doing, I don't even know, some fighting right here. There's some statues, uh, some some buildings here and there. And the only way to get here is to park at the beginning. There's another park on the other side, but you'd have to drive around the city basically to get here. Annie, <laughs> what does she have there? <laughs> So this lady has a scale here. You pay her what? 10, 20 cents? 20 cents. 20 cents. You stand on it and you see how much you weigh. <laughs> I've never seen this before. A vendor with a scale. Amazing. Horrible. Then I gained like five kilos already while I've been here. Do you know? Hi, the show. She actually paid her double because obviously we filmed, but the lady doesn't want to take our money. She's really trying to give us back the, the 10 euro cents. Nah, she has to keep it. And this is the map of the park. So you have the lake in the middle, and the park's really, really big actually. We only saw a speck. We walked only from here to here and back. We didn't go all the way inside here. A lot more things, lots of trees, lots of paths. So if you want to go exercise, great place. If you're here with your family, definitely go over here, relax, you know, have a coffee by the lake, have the food, obviously, the breakfast. All right, so now let's get in the car and go to Kruja. Kruja. This is the main boulevard called the Boulevard de Schmore de Combit. That would be translated the martyrs, martyrs of the nation. So this street goes all the way to Mother Teresa's Square and then from here you go straight down and you make it to Skanderbeg Square. Yes. So this is the street that connects both of the main squares in the city center. As you can see, lots of traffic to exit Tirana. Oh my God, almost a car crash right here. There's cars like parked on the side of the road and it's really just this roundabout that's like super congested. I mean, never ending amount of cars. And if you guys didn't know, you know, during communist times, there was like almost no cars in Albania. So most people couldn't get around the country. Now, lots of cars and their favorite brand is Mercedes-Benz. And as you can see, open road now. We're on the highway. Uh, this is the highway that connects Tirana all the way up to Skodra. And on the way, you have Kruja. And Kruja is an important like medieval city, right? It is the medieval city of uh, Albania. And it is, uh, it is located 32 kilometers away from Tirana. As you can see, we're driving through like a valley. On the right and the left, you have hills and mountains, but most of the mountains are all the way near the border, near North Macedonia, right? So that's just the, the mountains that go along the country from north to south. And when you get to the very north, that is the Albanian Alps. That's how the country is made up of. Yes. And here, as you can see, lots of businesses, uh, just businesses, very little houses. The houses that you do see are like more like farming, you know, houses out there in the middle of nowhere. 
and over here just along this there's like small hotels you know hotel nevada right there other small businesses supermarkets we are now passing through the town of fruskruya fruskruya and this town's famous because back in 2007 when george w bush was the president of the united states he came to albania came to this town and he had a coffee at a, a cafe right here and they changed the name of the cafe to George W. Bush Cafe and they also have a statue of him right there in the center. As people went crazy they were uh, kind of happy and uh, uh, the news were all about George W. Bush and uh, the people here really likes America and uh, they put a statue of the man so. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's pretty amazing. Hey George W. Bush. And we're almost here at Kruja. It's actually super high up in a mountain. To get here during the Middle of Ages must have been a mission. <laughs> yes, it was a um, this, it was a strategic point regarding to the to the war that uh, uh, Skanderbeg, our national hero, made against the Ottoman invaders. And uh, the altitude here goes to uh, goes to 600 meters above the sea level. And the sea is right there. So this is 600 meters high, like. Super high up. Cruel, yeah, yes. I need to save this guy. Let me save him. She'll pee on you. Baby! The best part of the Balkans, the Herman tortoise. Beautiful. You see them everywhere. Let's let him go. Another turtle saved. Yes. So to get to the castle, you have to take this super winding road go along this huge hill and over here to the right you have incredible views of the town. Is that the castle at the very end over there? Yes, that is the castle. Okay, so we have to go through the town like this and then cross to that side. Oh, okay. Wow. So it's like perched over the town in a way. And that's it. After a 45 minute drive, we are here in Gruja, medieval town over in the mountains incredible right there's a castle they have a bazaar here you can see how they make hats and there's a delicious restaurant in the castle we're going to visit later today and that's it for our morning we started off in tirana park and tirana lake and we had an incredible breakfast it was like really filling everything was made from the mills when you go to tirana go there and have some food they're open really for lunch and dinner for me they opened up really early breakfast it was like traditional breakfast my favorite thing for sure was that incredible incredible veal head stew it was like the best broth ever lots of organs just wow it, it like it fixed me because i was feeling a little down this morning but it like took me to another level and then we drove all the way over here incredible spot we're gonna explore now now it's the restaurant bardi that we're going to eat our lunch let's do it i'm hungry and this is the restaurant Bar bardi Restaurant Bardi since 1994. We're in the back in the kitchen seeing how they make a few different dishes. Here we have the yuca, so that's the tagliatelle pasta with chicken. Over here he has something on a skewer, so a kebab. He has a small burger there as well. And this is rack of lamb, no? Yeah, lamb? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so it's rack of lamb in the oven. Amazing. Over here they're cutting up different cheeses, lots of lettuce, lots of salads. What is this one? It's burek. Yeah, with the lamb. This one? With lamb, yeah. No way. Burek with lamb. Yeah. Wow, I've never seen it. And it actually looks similar to like baklava, but it's lamb burek. Different, unique. I'm excited. I can't wait to try this. Hey, so what is this? What is it? Fisty. So he said I can try it. Mm. I know what this is. It's like a, man, I don't know what this is. What is this? <laughs> what I just tried was actually made from plums. It's almost like a super thin, but also very dense plum. I don't even know what you can call it, like a paper? Right here, the chef's doing a tava with potatoes and lamb. Wow. What? This guy's the man, look at this. He makes his own cheese. Right here, he has blueberry cheese and he has spices cheese. Spices and blueberry and blueberry. I'm trying some. I want. I want to eat. Yeah. <laughs> we saw the raki, but we didn't try any yet. So we're going upstairs and we're gonna try some delicious rakia. We're gonna try it from the barrels. Yeah. What? Oh yes. First raki of the day. Rakia. Mmm. Oh, it's amazing. What is it? Three years. Three years. Yeah. In the barn. What? Three years, yeah. Wow, that's the difference right there. It's been aging 
Wow, so Cabernet Franc, uh, Merlot, and Syrah makes this delicious rakia. This is amazing, my friend. Wow, this is too good. How much for a bottle? 10 euro, 15 euro, 50 euro. <laughs> mm. It's strong, but there's so much taste in it. Three different grapes fermenting for three years. I will not start with the meat, let's start with the salad. This is the first salad cut uh, today from our farm. And here we have the pies. There are one, two, three, four, five different types of pies. Here is the lamb. First we cook the lamb, and then we cook the potatoes. Then we cook both of them together. All right, guys, this is amazing. Mountain food, love it. Lamb, potatoes, in a tava, incredible. I cannot wait to jump on this. But first, I think we should try some of the pies, some of the cheeses, the salad. I think I'm gonna jump on this one first. So you can see this is the potato fritter. Potato fritter, amazing. I'm gonna open it. Oh, this is this is actually a mix. So it's potatoes, but I think there's some lamb in here. Mmm, mmm. It's lamb, potatoes. I'm pretty sure there's onion in here. It's mushy. It's moist. The juice is a lamb. You can't eat this food. Not even anything. Next, blueberry cheese. Mm -hmm. mm. It's almost like manchego, but you have hints of blueberry in there. Well, it's like a fruity cheese. I love when people invent like this because you rarely see it. Mm. Next, I'm gonna try the pepper cheese. Oh my god. This manchego cheese on fire. Mmm, spices. This is just too good. I think next I have to try this. This is the squash pie, right? Let's try it. Mmm, -hmm. it's so flaky. As soon as the pumpkin mixed with the, the pita dough, it's insane. That's the best pie I've tried in Albania. How's that? But next, I'm gonna dive on to the lamb burek. I love burek, the best pie on the planet. And this one has lamb, and it's cut differently. Obviously, they give you like bite sizes, so you can just have a quick bite. Here you go. Unbelievable. It's so crazy good. Every time you bite, it makes the juices, onion, crunch. After you know. Wow. The best Borek. So these are like basically samosas, empanadas, somsas. So you see? Little pies, right? And what's inside is spinach. Mm hmm. It's not spinach. This one's lamb. So I thought. It was just spinach. There's two different ones. Let's see if this one has spinach. Yes, spinach and cheese, right? I think, or is that just cheese? I think it's just cheese. Okay, awesome. I love the cheese pies. They're so good. And this is like feta cheese, like goat cheese. I'm gonna get full on pies before I even touch the lamb. The food is homey, it's fresh. Farm to table. So this one is a sauce yogurt, almost like tzatziki. Mm, fantastic, I love that it came into this cucumber. You can just eat the whole thing if you want to. And next to it we have this super fresh goat cheese. Soft cheese. This is like the best mozzarella, my god. This food is unbelievable, guys. Unbelievable, the taste, the flavors, textures. You have creamy, you have soft, you have buttery. All right, I'm jumping on the lamb next. Oh my God, this lamb night is crazy. Mmm, so good. Oh man, baked lamb. My favorite meat of all time is lamb. Mm. I'm eating like this. It's so good. 
It's unbelievable, man. The juices. The freshness is one of the best lambs ever. They baked it, then they put it in the tava and they heated it up. So it was an, like a double bake in a way. Mmm, the amount of flesh here. Mmm, same. The fat, the flesh, everything attached to the bone is the best. And this is their amazing rakia, aged for three years in oak barrels using three different grapes. Phenomenal. Oh, this is like the perfect amount of food for two people. We couldn't even finish it. I mean, really, this is like three or four people. Lots of amazing cheese, different pies. I didn't even touch the salad. I'm sure it's really good, but I'm full. And the lamb, I gotta say, probably the best lamb I've had so far in Albania. It's too phenomenal. Like, it's it's just too juicy, delicious. It's food with this view. Mm. Wow. I have to have some more of the lamb. This is a different part of the lamb. Obviously, it comes with four pieces, huge pieces. I was eating the leg, obviously, and this is like the ribs. Oh my God. The amount of flesh here, it just falls off the bone. Mm. That's one thing that will never happen to you in Albania. You'll never eat frozen food. Everything is from the table. Most places, the good places. And lastly, we have dessert, kabuni, which is a very special dish they have here. It's rice, lamb neck, cinnamon, and raisins. What is this? Mm. It's almost like rice pudding, but you taste the juices of the lamb. The more exotic desserts I've had, having lamb neck in your dessert, don't knock it until you try it. Mm -hmm. The main thing with this dish is that it's super sweet. So imagine like a rice pudding, you have the cinnamon, but then you have a little bit of the juices from the lamb. So that's what gives it an extra like taste, an extra earthy taste, mountain taste, but it's the best. I'm done. This is one of the most famous museums in all of Albania, Skanderbeck Museum, open from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Let's go inside and see a little bit. Let's continue. Skanderbeck Museum is basically a history lesson of medieval Albania, 1400s. So, quick history lesson here. When you walk in, you see the map of Albania during that time, medieval Albania. You see all the settlements, right? And what happened was Skanderbeck was from here, from this area. He was sent over to be part of the Ottoman, uh, Ottoman army. Then he came back in the 1440s, 43. 1443, he came back, he united the princes of Albania, and he started basically an uprising against the Ottomans. He was fighting the Ottomans off for about 25 years until he died in 1468. He decided to make this his base because his father had this as base as well. And yeah, I mean, that's sort of what happened, right? So you walk through, you see a little bit of the history, you see, you know, depictions of it all, you see his helmet, and then when you make it to the top, you get this epic view overlooking the castle, the ruins, the area. Beautiful views. Wow, you see the river right there, more mountains. And over here, you see huge mountains. Yeah, that's basically the museum. Really, really interesting. Now let's keep going. Yeah. Let's go. As soon as you walk outside of the castle, you can see this one main road that goes to the bazaar. And here, there's so many different souvenir shops. There's bars, there's restaurants. Lots of souvenirs. They also have an ethnographic museum inside the castle, but because we're going to the bazaar, we're gonna see how they make the hat. We decided to skip that, but you should definitely do that if you wanna see it. And this is the bazaar of Kruja. Look at this, incredible. It's so authentic. The floor, the stones. I mean, this is like stepping back in time. And right now we're gonna enter this shop over here and we're gonna see how this man makes these hats right here, this traditional hat made out of wool, lamb wool. Okay, I think the shop is right here. My friend, I made it. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So you're gonna show me how to make some hats, shoes? Yeah. These are my factory. As you can see here in his factory, he has dozens of hats. Some are shaped a little differently. You know, some more round. Look at this one. Super nice. And then over here, you have all the shoes non-stop pairs of shoes and i've never seen these types of shoes the lamb shoes man the wool
this other instrument here we press it the wool this piece of wool we now we press it for 24 hours here and after we make it with the hot water and the soap. So that's the first two steps in the process of making the hat. This is the third step, right? 24 hours, but we were skipping it because it already has something ready from 24 hours ago. One hat, we need two pieces of wool like this. Soap help for it's like a glue to stick. It's like a nice little pillow. So if you guys are wondering why they have so many different shapes is because each one of these represents a different area or a county, right, in Albania. So this one, I don't know which one it is, but I know that this one over here is North Albania, right? This is North, like Skodra area. Tirana, oh, this one. Okay, so longer. These are from Northeast Albanian or the Middle Albanian, use Elbasan. Gram, the brush, these are Tirana shape. This one and this one here. Now I work with this instrument like this. And like this to make more smaller. So basically once he's done washing it, he presses it and it like it basically gets smaller, it shrinks. To clean with these black things, with this instrument, like this. <laughs> So that process takes roughly 30 minutes to take out all the little black, black little hairs, right? And we're gonna skip that. Yes. We're gonna just go to the next one. He has another one that he already did that. So he's gonna start again. The sixth process, we do it again, the same thing and make the hat more smaller like this. The hat, it's made more smaller now. And we have to put in this shape. with this other instrument. Water and soap to make an other process. This is a very old razor. So basically what he's doing here is he's sharpening the razor. Cut some more off the top, right? Shave more. Can you shave me? <laughs> this is the last process? Yeah. Instrument. Mm -hmm. And now this is a finished hat. Just put somewhere to dry it. How long does it dry for? A day? For one day. That's it? Yeah. So quick question, how long does it take to make the shoes? And that's a different process, that's another mold, right? It's a different process to make the shoes and to take time for two hours, two hours and a half for one pair. I'm gonna take this one, these are complete. Yeah? Krujaha? No, from South Albania. South Albania? Yeah. So let's see how it fits. Yeah, you like it? Think it's good? Very good. And how much? 1,200? 1,200. Perfect. Taking it. I need to. This is this is the way to be. <laughs> As you saw, they also have the shoes, the slippers. What is this? Like an egg? Egg. An egg made out of wool. Made from needle. Made from needle. Yeah. Yep. Like this. Of everything by hand. So you have two types of shoes here: slippers. You have the regular ones, all wool, right? And then you have the ones with 
the leather on the bottom. So leather, obviously you don't want to slip. This is for the house. You don't go out with this, but it's really hot. It's wool. So, I mean, you have to be in a cold place or a really cold house. And I'm going to take two for my kids. Two. Now you know when you come to Cruja, come to the bazaar, walk through, come straight here, buy yourself some shoes, a hat. The most traditional thing you can get in Albania are these. Super authentic. Ci vediamo dopo. Ciao. Ciao. Grazie. Grazie mille. All right, so here's another souvenir shop. There's, you said 60, right? 60? 60, no? Around 60. Around 60 souvenir shops. They all sell very similar things. Obviously, his focus is on the shoes and the hats mainly. They have other stuff as well. But here you can get, you know, some. This is crazy. This is like, I guess it's in Uzbekistan. But they make it here as well. Awesome. And then over here you have some tea sets, coffee sets, you have shirts. That The shirt, Albania, this is the best. This. Like, we do like Dua Lipa, right? With the hands. <laughs> and then over here we have, you know, just different souvenirs. Got mugs, you know, Mother Teresa was an Albanian born and raised in North Macedonia, but she's an Albanian descendant. And then you have scarves, uh, just tons of different things. I suggest, I highly suggest the hat, the shoes, but you can also buy stuff from here. You know, all around is very similar things. This is like more like antiques, that's cool. So you use this to do the thread of the wool, right? And this is 120 years, 120 years? And it only costs three thousand lek, so you're talking about thirty US dollars. This can this can look good on my wall. I don't know. Thirty dollar. How old is that one? Old old. Alright guys, so we've been walking around, we've seen the shops, there's so many different things, antiques, but this shop focuses on you know the flag of Albania. Sweater, shirt. He's gonna let me try one on. Here. Also. If you speak Italian, you can get by in Albania yeah, very small, easily. Small, uh, small. small? I'll try, I'll try. Let's see. Extra no? small, extra large. This is extra small? Extra large. Oh, this is small. But if small, it's. Small. Yeah, maybe I need a medium, but I think it's going to be medium, awesome. Medium. Yeah, this one's cool. Look at this. How do I look? Amazing. A real Albanian. Right? Yes. It's hot, though. It's hot. <laughs> hey. Uh, avete M? Questa S? Sì, sì. 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 No, Madonna. So I'm buying an Albanian flag sweater. I love it. I love the eagle. I love this country. I'm going to rock it. When it's cold, I'm going to put it on. So guys, it costs 25, uh, 25 euro, no? Oh, 25,000 lei, okay, so that's 25,000 euro. Less than euro. Yeah, like 20, 20 euro, yeah. something like that. Okay, okay. Thank you. Grazie. Grazie, grazie, grazie. She's making Albanian carpets? What? So everything in the store, she made, everything. Yes. Wow. Every, you can everything, everything. Here it is made by her. Incredible. It took her a week, like over a week to make this, like around 10 days. Seven days. Seven days. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Gotta say, one of the most unique towns I've ever been to. Medieval. Love the bazaar, everybody's super friendly. You can drink raki, you can eat delicious food. The people, the people, never ending textiles, and everybody is the best. That is it. We explored Kruja. Yes. Kruja. 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 We went to the castle, explored the castle. We had an incredible, delicious feast at what's the restaurant? Restaurant Bardi at Palaya. Restaurant Bardi. Wow. The lamb potatoes, all different pies, the burk with lamb. <laughs> that was just too delicious. Then we explored the museum, we walked around the bazaar, we saw how they made the hat. That was like the most interesting thing for me on this whole thing. Besides the beautiful views, the uniqueness of it, that experience, just seeing how they make it. And that's the most traditional thing you can see in Albania, right? And the nicest people. Nice people, I know, the people. And he gave me some raki. I mean, just incredible. And then we walked around a little more, saw some of the shops, 60 shops. Everything is traditional. You can see them making different things, wood carvings, rugs, etc. This is a must visit when you come to Albania. Only a 35 minute drive north of Tunana. So if you want to do it as a day trip, you can. You can come up here in the morning, spend the whole day here, and then go back. Hello, everybody. Hello, welcome. Are you ready? Yep, of course, very ready. Love this walkway, beautiful. 
you have vines, you have trees, you have lights, and right here, this is shaped in a heart. Look, heart shaped entry. It's so cool, man. Yeah, yeah, it's very nice. This is beautiful. Yeah. So you come here a lot? Uh, not very often. When I have some special guests like you, I bring them here because I live five minutes from here, so I'm like lucky to have this place here. As soon as you enter the property, is this huge terrace, lots of beautiful tables, all wood with this view. And over here at the end, they have homemade wine, homemade rakia, homemade Morning. jams. I mean, never-ending stuff. Morning. Hi. How are you doing? Good? No, not too bad. Like the weather. Yeah. Okay, so now we'll introduce you more about this bio food restaurant. So this is a farm. They produce everything here, every vegetable, everything what is inside the restaurant, everything where they cook, they have it around this area. So we're going to see some ducks and they have a lot of chickens, they have cows and everything around here. This garden is really, really beautiful. Look, just like super low tables. They put like cushions on the floor, rugs on the floor, so you can either sit like right here, right? Oh, have some breakfast or you can go down. Like, sit like this. Oh, oh my God. So it's like chic, it's cozy, yeah. it's you farming. Different area, different area where you can enjoy how do you want to feel. Here, relaxed, more like a sir inside and more like a cozy place, like that area we filmed before. What is that? That's it's a deer, deer. deer yeah. Over here to the right, we have a mini pond and this is where the ducks stay. You can see a few ducks right here, some babies, some elderly. So we're gonna pick the eggs from the chicken, not the duck. Chicken's eggs are nicer for breakfast. Let's <laughs> say like this. Whoa, Dude, that's a lot of chicken. <laughs> Gotta be careful where you step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So here we also have a few turkeys, turkeys, roosters, oh. hens. Turkey is traditional for, for the New Year's Eve, so every Albanian should have in their table a turkey. So we're going to pick the egg we are going to cook today. Unfortunately there's only one egg because they haven't laid any other eggs right now. Okay, so one right there. Yeah. I'm guessing they're laying right there too. It's for us today. That's our breakfast? Yeah, that's our breakfast. We have to share this. <laughs> and by the way, they have two different types of turkeys here. So we have the bigger one, you see over here, this is the one I always see in America, and then you have this little guy. So I thought they were like the babies, but they're not. And then I think those are guinea fowl. So David, now we are entering to the goat's farm and the cow's farm. But here we have so, a lot of uh, baby goats. So basically this is the stable. So here we have goats, those are baby goats, brother goats, and there are cow. Wow, it smells great. As soon as I mentioned cheese, the guy came in here and started milking the goats. Look at this, he's milking the goats. They're a little nervous because I'm inside, so I'm keeping my distance, but as you can see, just keeps going at it, slowly filling up an entire bucket, and that's how they make the delicious, amazing Albanian cheese. My oh man, this is great. This is awesome. The next section, there's more goats, then there's like juvenile goats, and at the very end, you have five cows. One of them is a calf in the very end. Uh, you know, I don't want to get too close because I already see everybody's looking at me. You can get aggressive. You don't want to get too close to the babies. This is amazing. Yeah, so everything we'll try will be directly from uh, bio food. Take the milk, prepare the cheese, and then we're going to taste it. I actually haven't seen this process yet in Albania, but you know, the farm life is a big thing here. Slow food, delicious, organic, always from the farm. That is the best part about the food of this country. Nothing is frozen, everything is fresh daily. Grapes are is something traditional of, uh, of the villages around here, especially this one, Daias and Gure Vogel. So now is the season of grapes, so in one month they'll be ready and we prepare wine and raki, which is very famous in Albania. Here in Albania, there's a few different indigenous grapes that aren't found anywhere else in the world. They're called shisha. We have shashi zi and shashi bar, which is very, very popular grapes. And with that one, every house in the village produce raki for their own. When they have some guests, they give the raki they produce from this kind of grapes. 
So we are going to see the ducks. So the gentleman will give some food and we can have all together in one place so we can go inside. Ducks are not dangerous. Love the little houses here. The hills here. It reminds me of like Tuscany, Italy. This? Similar to Italy. Like Tuscany. Like Tuscany, yeah. It's actually not time for feeding. Yeah. So we walked in. But they are so scared of us. I mean, I slowly walk through and they're just running, making crazy sounds. For breakfast, except that one egg, we need some tomatoes. Perfect. Okay, so we go and pick some. Picking your tomatoes, picking your eggs. We should probably get some chilies too. I like chilies. Peppers. Uh, you got some? Yeah, look at this. So we got four tomatoes, really nice looking tomatoes. They're actually not like the ones I usually get, which are more round. These are like, I don't even know, almost like a pepper. That's right. Similar. Oh, so fresh. No problem. <laughs> now we're gonna see her crack the egg. Pam, pam, pasta. Very simple. And here we have breakfast. Scrambled eggs. In the middle we have a beautiful board with salami, cheese, butter, more cheese. I think there are two marmalades, tomato, olives. We also have bread and we have rakia. And this one you said is aged 19 years? Exactly. Smooth, smoky. Some great rakia. It actually almost tastes like bourbon. But it's right here. Strong. And I forgot to mention, they also gave us super fresh milk. And it's hot. It's like unbelievable. Excuse me. Unbelievable. All right, guys, let's jump on these eggs. I am so hungry. It's already, what, 9, 10 in the morning? Mm hmm. Mm. Nice fresh eggs. Love the oil. And the olive oil comes from here as well. So. Mm. Nice fluffy bread. So they surprise us with some petula, which is Albanian donut. Mm-hmm. Nice fried dough. Mm. I think this needs like some jam, you know? You gotta try this one. Mmm. This is one of the best peach jams of all time. This pairs so good with the crispiness of the fried donut. Mm, the jam. Sweet, crunchy, and doughy. That's funny because my friend here is like, we're gonna have a simple breakfast. <laughs> I know simple breakfast is a lot. Well, I'm just gonna keep trying everything. Mmm. Salted goat cheese, so fresh, man. Olives. This is exactly what I need. Wake up, nice big breakfast. It's supposed to be small, but when you start adding these things together, it's big. Oh, this is the best. This is like the ultimate. This is the pomodorini jam. So it's uh, it's strange. We, we don't we haven't seen it before around. So it's something uh, only from this place. My friend saying pomodorini, but it's basically tomato, right? So pomodoro in Italian, just like drips all over. Mmm, nice and sweet. Mmm. Yeah, the green tomato is always a little, I think, more sour. Just dip in here. Wow, nice, simple, delicious filling. Mm. Now I'm just gonna start mixing stuff. My favorite. Mm -hmm. What a great breakfast. Thank you. Gazor. 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 Whoa, it's strong. <laughs> <laughs> it is strong. Sip it slowly. And to end our meal, we're having some watermelon. Mm. Oh man, it's so moist. So juicy. I eat this a lot back home. Almost every day I eat one. Mm. Yeah, I mean, during season. <laughs> All right, guys, resort. This thing will wake you right up. See, we had no coffee. We had rakia. 
Bye. Thank you. Felimenderi. Felimenderi. Thank you so much. The marmalade, the donut, the rakia. I mean, everything was phenomenal. Thank you so much. Thank you. And the whole experience. Beautiful. Thank you. Right, Take care. So that was the experience uh, at the Bio Farm Nano. So I hope uh, you guys enjoy. So now we are going to Berat and we have uh, two hours driving time and we'll have a beautiful scenery on the way. Berat is a medieval town, thousand windows, it looks gorgeous, it's on a river. I've been hearing about it the whole trip. You know, I planned this trip to go there no matter what and stay there for at least a night. There's wineries in the area, there's incredible small boutique hotels. I mean, just a gorgeous spot. We are first reaching Elbasan city in the, our new highway. Before it was two hours to Elbasan, now it's in 20 minutes. The next city, beautiful one, but we'll see it when we go back to Pograde. 20 minutes? 20 minutes to Elbasan. It used to be two hours? Yeah. So this highway cut a two hour drive down to 20 minutes. I mean, it's a perfect highway. Two lanes and two lanes, goes right through this valley, mountains around us. You have gas stations, small hotels, more farms. Beautiful. So in front we'll pass the tunnel, which was the first one in Albania, and uh, people were very happy to have this tunnel because it made our road to Elbasan very shorter. So this tunnel is for 4.7 kilometers. This is a never-ending tunnel, like never-ending. Yeah. I've gone through a lot of these in Italy and Spain. You know, it's the only way to connect. If not, you go through mountains, which takes forever, forever. Wow, how long did it take? Like five minutes to get through here, huh? At least. Whoa, 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 whoa. So we are reaching Elbasan city now. And this was one of the main cities in communism that, uh, that had the metallurgic uh, factories. So all the metal, all the metal of Albania came from here. So for railways, for everything we needed, we'll uh, pass next to it and you can see still uh, half of the place is under a Turkish company that still works collecting uh, scrap. Scrap, yeah. Okay. They also have a castle here, so that's an, one of the interesting things to visit. If you're ever going to visit, we're actually going to stop here tomorrow on the way to the lake just to quickly see the castle and have a breakfast. And that's it, guys. From here, we just make a right and go yeah, straight down exactly. to Berat. You have arrived in our first stop at Belsi Lake, which is one of 84 lakes that are in this area, all natural ones. So this has become a lately a uh, tourist site because they have invested a uh, beautiful pedestrian road and uh, people can go kayaking also. So this is one of the 84 natural lakes here in Belsh. We have a small boardwalk, you have a pier, basically. Can you go on a boat? I'm sure, yeah, there's a boat yeah, there. They have a, use, they are using it for a tourist uh, boat, so people can go have a ride. Okay. Yeah. And that's basically that, right? Just restaurants, Restaurant. small town, parking right here, lots of taxis. There are a lot of bars in front of the lake. A lot of bars? Yeah, there are a lot of the bars over there. And so they have finished the pedestrian road, so you can go all around the lake. So people use it for uh, running, afternoon time, for some sports. And uh, so it's interesting because uh, this uh, was suggested to be the capital of Albania before 1920. So by uh, one of the brothers Frashri, which are some, uh, some writers in Albanian language. So they suggest this city to be the capital. And uh, so hopefully it doesn't because I'm from Tirana, so I didn't want Tirana to be uh, like a rural area. So now I live there, but this city has to be, uh, could be much nicer because of the lakes and the area that it has around. So we just asked somebody and they said Saturday is the day they come with the fish. But right now they're selling lots of different fruits and vegetables. Here we have some pears, some onions, some peaches. Over here we have huge watermelons humongous watermelons wow they're they're weighing it right here somebody's buying great they have nuts apples honey i mean basically everything you get at the farm right yeah. so here on the boardwalk lots of cafes yeah. restaurants bars so you can see now it's almost half full but afternoon time when it's sunset time there is a lot of people all people living around here they come all here have a walk with the children's and uh, they enjoy the, the quiet, the peace of uh, lake. I gotta say, Belch was a nice surprise. Super cool spot. If you're ever driving, like we just did, from Abasan down 
all the way to Beira, stop here, have a coffee, have a drink, relax by the lake. It's just the afternoon, but if you can get here early morning, even better. And that was my incredible journey in Tirana, Albania. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below, would you ever travel to Tirana and explore the beautiful land of Albania? Let me know and I'll see you soon. Please subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. Peace.